buddy Craig. Hello, for gaming community and Baby Lake community as a whole. We're back with another podcast episode. Uh, this time we have a dual interview or duo discussion. Um, we have Armor back. I think I mentioned it on the last uh, episode that we did with our apology and uh, for everything that went on with customs. And we missed his interview. Um, sincerely apologize about that. But we got him back up here today. Um, Great Blader from New Jersey. And he also brought his friend up here, um, Bay the Blade from Instagram. And I definitely wanted to shout him out. I was I was hyped when he was coming on. I didn't know that they were friends. It's, uh, it's a small Bay Blade community, but it's it's a it's a good one. Or I say it's it's a big Bay Bay Blade community, but um, it's a small world. Um, and I wanted to uh, speak on that a little bit because I know we were talking about a, a little bit before. So Bay the Blade, when I first started my store. Um, you know, I was doing, we've been doing everything ourselves, just our family and things like that. And just had our Instagram and we're making just like small posts. I'm not big into marketing or, um, really selling myself is part of it's like, I'm, I'm not good at it, but also it's, it's like, I don't know. I believe in just a solid service and community. Um, people want to buy, they can, if they don't, they don't. But I remember hopping on Instagram one day and I sent out a newsletter and um, I ended up seeing it in my Instagram feed in searches. And I was like, who is, like, what is this? And, you know, I saw this, when I, when I saw it, I clicked on it. I was like, man, that looks like that's my newsletter. And at that time, I probably only had, like, 20 to 40 people subscribe to it. So it was surprising. And um, it was actually Bay the, Bay the Blade had shared it. And I thought it was so cool because he had, like, thousands of subscribers. And he didn't have to do anything like that. And um, I think I reached out, told him thank you. And that was like the first initial report and the love I got shown from the community. And it was from you, bro. And uh, I, I remember that um, from day one, like you were the first um, outward supporter of the store. Um, and I had really, really appreciate that. I don't know if I've ever, is, is Craig on? Oh, no, that was a uh, uh, crisis. Oh, he's back now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> My bad. Uh, I know I was rambling, but I wanted to. Um, but I wanted to say I wanted to say that uh, I probably caught you off guard, but I did want to say thank you, and I wanted to give a a formal thank you. Um, um, up here, man. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, Bay the Blade. I I know your 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 real full name just from the store, but uh, Michael and uh, yeah. thank you, man. Yeah, um, you're welcome. It was it was an email, so you know, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I, it um, it meant it meant it meant a whole lot to me because getting started, and I was like, "Dang, man, that's that's love that 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 you shared that and 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 showed that support." Um, all right, so we'll 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 kick this off. I'll let y'all go ahead and um introduce yourself. We'll start off with armor, and we'll go with uh beta blade. Um, I know you did it last time, but just treat it as if because you're talking to us, but you're really talking to the yeah the community. yeah. So y'all good. All right, uh, hey everyone. Uh, I'm Armor. Uh, was uh, relatively new into the competitive scene up until last year when I started uh, attending more uh, consistently. Uh, we had our reach. We uh, thanks to Mr. Means, we got lucky and actually got into the, the BWC because originally New Jersey wasn't planned to have a regionals event. Uh, I managed to get second and then decided to head down to Florida, where I got to meet everyone like Crisis here and. Uh, all the bladers around the U.S., but I think maybe a few others uh, from around the world, like uh, Papa Bay showed up. But it was a great experience being able to play there with everyone. Uh, that's all from me, I guess. He mm -hmm. raped me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He absolutely destroyed me in uh, the last round of Dark Horse. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't want to get into, like, too big into talking about how I did in there because uh, I didn't want to come across as, a you know, being too... Yeah, no, uh, no, no, I'll, I'll fully give it to him. He straight right. me so bad. That was 3 0. My yeah. man said, Screw your wind combo. <laughs> wow, yeah, those things, those things happen. Um, I think that's the, the, the beauty of it when you get the, those big tournaments and then you meet people who you, you haven't heard of or never seen before. Um, but they're actually like, you know, they've got great hidden talent yeah i think it was um, really nice for me because uh 
I was I was like the one coming as the person like who didn't or wasn't known by knew a bunch of the names like who ended up showing up. So it was only great to like see all of them. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um yeah, Beta Blade, what's your story? Um, so yes, I made the blade. Um, I mainly post content and uh, a bit of news on my Instagram. Um, and I've also been a part of Discord for about three years now. That's how I met Honor as well. We've um, been friends ever since. Um, tournament wise and competitive, I never actually been to a tournament, but I really want to go to one. Um, so I know Shin Dog, he's like the main organizer in my area. So maybe one of these days I'll pop up in one of his tournaments. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. I remember you had told me that before, I, and I mentioned Shin Dog because it's actually great that you have him um, local to you because he's one of the he's a, a big influence in the community. I don't think Shin Dog really has any haters. Um, if he does, I I don't know, <laughs> but he, he's got a lot of love and he's a great organizer, great person to talk to, um, to get things going, um. And what you shouting out the news, I do remember that also. Like all of my, when I know when a new product comes out, any new release, um, all the specs for it, I get all that information from um, Bay the Blade. He'll usually um, like tag me in it on, well, not usually, he always tags me in it on um, Instagram. And that's how I'm able to know, to get the pictures that I get, to know when something releases. I don't know how you find out so quick. It's like as soon as it drops, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not gonna lie. I'll be on it most of the time. Yeah, yeah like... <laughs> he, he is my source for um, new releases, photos, information, and whenever it's out. Because sometimes I'll see stuff like you'll get those little the images and and like displays, like outlines. Um, mm-hmm. and I'll ask him. I'm like, "Hey, what's up?" He's like, "Dude, that is like I I know it. I seen it, but I'm not officially posting it until TT releases it. That's where it's no trouble, and we get the 100 percent facts." And I'm like, "Okay, man." I, I respect it. Thank you. So yeah, yeah. Um, and y'all got to know each other on, through Discord. Yeah, yeah. We met um, through. Uh, I believe. I think it was prior to World Bladers was before WBO server, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm actually um, not that active on WBO, so World Bladers was the place. Yeah, where we. Yeah. Right. But uh, there used to be an old uh, New York host called uh, KJ Rules, or at least he was yeah. a player. He was not a host. Uh-huh. Of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, he's the one like who's in charge of the server, and I think that's where I entered like into the Beyblade community at first because a uh, WBO server was created like I want to say three years ago. Mm-hmm. I don't quite remember three to four, but uh, yeah, I was started mm-hmm. there, and then I think the server was created shortly after, which is when we like all actually got to meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, so what is this? What is the other server? Like, is it's bigger than the WBO server? Uh, no, not at all. No, but I think at the start smaller. it might have been, but uh, like people don't join in or leave anymore. It's kind of just it's very quiet now. But uh, oh, it's yeah. just where we all like first met. Yeah, I knew um AJ when I took my organizers quiz. He was the one that was grading it and asking me to uh, <laughs> look up all the answers that I, I got wrong um but uh yeah i remember i remember kj um from from when i had started and 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 just communicating with him um via that so yeah it's just it's a small world it's solid it's solid um i do hope you get to able to get to your first tournament soon um uh and dude i don't know if i shouted you out mike i think the only thing that we did was when you disappeared and you came back but how you been brother uh, I've been okay. Yeah, my uh, my cat jumped onto my computer and turned the power button off, so I had to get my computer back on so I could hop back in. Yeah, yeah. These things happen. Life happens. Um, but yeah, and <clears throat> this is something I know I, I gave a lot of shout outs in, in uh on the last episode, <clears throat> but up here I also want to say thank you, Mike, for hopping up there with me because you didn't have to hop up there with me to um. Just be some support when I was talking, um, you know, about customs in the store and everything like that. But uh, I do want to say thank you, bro. Um, thank All you right. to the entire community. Yeah, everyone understand. But I appreciate that, brother, for for hopping up there. No problem. You're uh, welcome, buddy. Yeah. yeah. So back into it, and I'll I'll say it, and I do love your humility, armor. Um, 
But uh, yeah, y'all did have a good match. Uh, like I said, I know we talked about it before, but um, do you want to go over, I guess, your your experience again? You don't have to go as in depth, but your experience oh, yeah. again at BWC on um, that first night, second day, third day? No, oh, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, I flew in on what Friday night. Planes were all delayed, actually. Uh, so uh, I got like slightly late in than I expected, but uh, it was still like on times in terms of the event and before registration. But yeah, I was uh, just waiting in line. That's where I ended up meeting uh, Triple Dash and Lionheart Dash, which was, uh, I ended up hanging out with them for most of the time there. But uh, after we got registered and the uh, event opened up, uh, we got pulled on like backstage first to have like, I think there's some short interviews, uh, take some pictures. And then he kicked off the event with the uh, Dark Horseman, which was uh, a great experience because it was a bunch of different formats, especially the uh, Domination one, which I was, not really too keen on playing, but uh, it was something I definitely prepared more for as it was not something I had played before. But uh, I ended up getting stuck playing Broidito in that one, which I was really afraid of. And I didn't want to play him as my first match, I do have to admit. But uh, I somehow managed to get through that, which was, it felt like a miracle. And then I moved on to play, uh, I think it was Zector after, if not Sniper. It was one yeah, of the it, two. Yeah, it, it was Zector next. Yeah, I was... In a way, I was also intimidated by him because he was first Washington seed, but at the same time, like, he had, like, a lot more... I, I don't know how to put this. It's just, like, I guess Royito is so, like, crazy good at attack. It's, like, it's, it's a lot more worrying, I think, when you have to play that. But uh, between me and Zector, it was kind of just considering the, like, the stamina matchups more, and I guess I had it planned better. Uh, Sniper ended up showing up for the next match, which I was... Uh, surprised again but uh i didn't i couldn't let him show me up again since he uh <laughs> won first place on over me at uh nj regionals so okay. uh i definitely had to take that win and then i think i ended up playing crisis after that in uh finals which was a crazy experience as well blow out <laughs> yeah but uh yeah dark horseman was definitely my craziest event i would probably say i had one of if not the hardest bracket uh out of that so uh, I, I was... it was definitely great to play in Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say I would say so. It sounded like you were at the, I don't know, end of a video game. It was just boss fight after yeah. boss fight. After boss yeah. Fight. Well, yeah. <laughs> but you pulled through. Yeah, no, it was a crazy experience. I still cannot believe like it ended up like that. But uh, yeah, that was just day one, and I was end up like super tired after that. Cause, and it's also like all the adrenaline. So uh, coming into Saturday where we had King of the Hill, I was a little worried, and I think everyone was going to be looking out for me now because uh, I had just, like, shown myself up there uh, the day before. But uh, so I got knocked out by Geekster. I think it was the third round in, down to the loser's bracket, and I had to fight my way all the way back up again, which is uh, crazy again because I think I ended up playing the most matches in total. I'm not sure why. I think I might have been, like, one of the first matches when they had to, like, cut down the first group to, uh, like, account for the buys and all that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, I somehow managed to get back all the way up. Uh, and then, did we have any of the, uh, what is it called? Like the special mini events that day or no? I am already forgetting. No, no. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, on the main event day? It was, yeah, on yeah. Saturday. Um, We had the same spin ruler and the top rubber. Okay, yeah. I didn't do too well in those. I think I won like one or two matches and then I got knocked out after. I'm definitely not a huge fan of single elimination as I... I feel like I tend to do better after I've lost once or like a few times. I'm not yeah. sure why, but uh, yeah, my record usually goes better then. But uh, got knocked out of those. It's it's no big deal. It was just those were definitely more for fun events, and I I definitely had a great time when I was playing them. Mm. Uh, yeah, and then moving into Sunday, we had to finish uh finish up our um, King of the Hill rounds, which I unfortunately got knocked out immediately by a uh, Fireblader. Big shout out to him. He was a great player then. Uh, and then we just had the uh, Iron Blader after, which I also did not do too well in, again. But uh, it's again, it was those are I just treat them more as for fun stuff, and uh, I had a great time there. Yeah, yeah, I know. Sometimes, like um, at least with me, uh, it's the nerves and the stress mm -hmm. of uh, you know single elimination um, that could kind of hit you a little bit hard. And then once those, like you said, you you get the, the first loss, or you want to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. that winning streak and then well like once it's out it's like okay well let me just let me just focus and play and and it might be some of that and when you get that focus and play and then you're good you're golden mm -hmm. um yeah but it, it, i know y'all had some good matches you did make it the top eight the next day so that like 
solidified. I think the first night with the Dark Horseman solidified everything. Um, yeah. There was no easy matches for um, you at all. Uh, not not anyone, but in, then you come in, like you said, and, and um, I know I think you have played in some tournaments, but all the, the everyone that you've played against has been in multiple, multiple competitive ranked tournaments. Oh, yeah. uh, so to, to go through and do well in that and then the next day make it to top eight um, is accomplishment in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it was definitely a great time to be down there. And it was like just being able to play everyone as well as just meet everyone. It was a great experience. Thousand percent, thousand percent. I know it was, um, I can't remember what was, because we talked about your combo last time. What was his, you weren't using win, right? It was. No, I was on dynamite. Okay. Uh, dynamite stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had done like a. A solid amount of testing before that because I was talking like in the WBO server and everyone. There's always like a huge debate on whether wind or dynamite is better, but I feel like it also comes down to the, like each individual person has different results. I feel like, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, dynamite just ended up being better for me, so that's what I went with. Yeah, Mike, um, Zector uses is Zector on dynamite heavy? No, Zector's Zector was really heavy with Vanish. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Washington has like a significantly more different meta in the sense they play a BDR on their left spin base. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what it yeah. is. And they use high extend on on like wind or yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, that that's what it was. Okay. Because I think like Zector was saying he got better results with that than mm -hmm. BDR. Okay. <laughs> I know it was something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What's the chocolate? Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I was just thinking back to um, when I had to play against uh, Lionheart um, in WBO deck format in the um, Dark Horseman, and he had his deck was Wind on High Extend Plus, um, Dynamite on BDR, and I think the third one was like Left Spin. Um, what was it? Uh, Burst. Let's been burst on the um Mo bearing Mobius uh, and my like my my wind combo. So right off the bat, we both played our wind. Our uh, I played wind. He played dynamite. So both of our regular BDR combos and mine okay. just like blew him out of the water. And I was like, okay, cool. So then he moves on. Um, he tries it again. I beat it again. And then he decides to try the um wind on high extend plus. And I look at him in the face. I look at Henwuja, who's judging, and I go, mode change. And they kind of give me this question mark face. I turn around and change to high mode, and I turn back around. And they're like, I don't understand what's going on here. And then we launch, and I just completely outspin him. And it's like their brains are trying to fathom what just happened. And yeah, it, was just, it was just so good. Yeah. What was you about to say, Armor? What was you about to say something? Oh, I was just, I feel like in that kind of situation, especially like with that given meta, once like one of your BDR combos is like confirmed to win out of the two, like the loser has to have something to fall back onto to like counter that. And uh -huh. I hate to say it, but I felt like his deck didn't really have that. It didn't. Yeah, like he didn't have okay, okay. an solution to beat okay. your uh, BDR. So, so the wind on high extend plus is a good counter to someone that doesn't know how to beat it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like he he made a deck with all three good combos. It's just I'm not sure if he had like complete coverage with that in that sense. Yeah, no, no, he 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 didn't have anything that was like a complete coverage, like a world on um drift or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, what, was just, it was just it was the, just their faces that got me. <laughs> this was the dad, the dad, right? Yes. Yeah, lion hearted triple dash is dad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Solid. Solid. Yeah. I know with with deck building, you have to. It is the counters. It is the strategy game. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And it can't get tough. Uh. But yeah, high mode. I don't think a lot of people utilize high mode. Like I've mm. only really seen here in the. No. Um. Well, I know Maryland. I know y'all use mm -hmm. it, and then it, we use it here, but it's. I don't think a lot of people use it or see the benefits of it because I think when it first started, nobody wanted to use it. And then some people were only using an opposite spin. They were saying that's the best. And I went to a tournament and I was like, man, I think like in some of these, at least 
with my testing and some of the events I've been to, I think high mode is um, is actually pretty darn good in same spin, uh, depending on your matchup. And um, I think that's proven to be so. And we're seeing that a whole lot more as we've been playing with it. I think, what, like a year now that Dynamite has been out? Two years? Yeah, two, yeah. two years? Yeah, two years. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. B- BU is Dynamite, so. Yeah, yeah, Dynamite BU. Um, and that's solid. That's solid. And um, yeah, and I don't, I don't want to shut you out, Michael. Um, uh, I know you said you haven't been to any tournaments before. Have you? Did you watch BWs? Well, there was nothing to watch. Uh, but did you follow it at all? Did you talk to Armor or um, do you give him tips? Are you his secret plug for combos or? <laughs> oh, if you mean me, no. I or, or, you yeah, know yeah. I heard about his. I heard about his win, so you know I was glad. You know he um, did great, um, but yeah, for me, I just I have a little bit of tabs on you know competitive combos, but for the most part, I'm just like watch from afar because my uh, agenda building isn't you know very experienced. So yeah. yeah, I just you know I just look on to hopefully one day you know get the gist of it and go to my own tournament and do my own thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure when. Um, I, I'm definitely not. These last few weeks have been completely crazy for me. I haven't been on the. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't been on the WBO website. I don't know any tournaments that's going on. I'm taking August off, uh, before my kids go back to school. My weekends will be with them, but in September I do plan on hosting an X event. Um, things are resolved up with the store, but I, I'm sure Shindog may be doing something soon and um also if you just wanted to talk to him like i can get you in contact with him too so you're just not showing up um by yourself and um how far how far is the is the la scene from you um it's not too far it's like probably an hour but it's just you know it's california so there's a lot of traffic um yeah and and then also because i know he actually had an x tournament like last week that was um just ending school, so I didn't have uh-huh. the time, unfortunately. So yeah, I'm just looking for another opportunity, and then we'll see. Yeah, solid, solid, solid. Um, yeah, that's 100. percent Um, mm-hmm. and I think I think we hit BWC. Did y'all mm-hmm. did Armor or Mike? Did y'all have anything else on BWC? Uh, I mean. No, not particularly. The, the only other thing we can really like, I guess, kind of discuss if he wants to is how did he feel about the um, like, like the format and everything being used. Oh, the event. Oh yeah. No. Oh. Actually, no. Yeah, we, we should talk about that. Um, it was interesting because I think we were all used to playing the uh, no wall bounce rule. Like, mm-hmm. uh, if it hits the wall, it's out. Like, I think that's the format we all use for our regionals tournaments, but running into actual PWC, he took that rule out for every event. So I felt like that, this is at least from my perspective, it limited attack use. Like people did not want to use it as much. I feel like personally, yeah. even like Broito's deck, he only had one attack bay out of the five when I played him. And I, I would personally attribute it to that, but I'm not sure. I, like I'd have to ask him personally. It, it was a big factor. Yeah. He 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 was gonna run two attack tights, but then yeah, he I figured decided not to. But yeah, uh, again, I'm not a fan of that rule. But uh, I mean, we played through it anyway. It is what it is, and uh, I think I did use like a little of attack here and there anyway. But uh, you're not a fan of the rule existing, or a fan of not, or, or like you would rather have the wall bounce. I would prefer if wall like a bay hitting the wall did count as out. Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're the. Possibly the first person that we talked to um, that that did like it. Um, I think. Well, how was it going down there? I don't remember if I asked this, but were there a lot of chaos? Like, was the back wall thing a thing? You know, because sometimes it's like we we think it's a thing, um, but they, we started seeing more that once the Beyblade was hitting that back wall, it was more than like staying out. Like if it was only happening like once or twice a tournament that the back wall was even a real thing, um, I think that's what we were running into to be like, hey man, why is this still here? Did y'all see it a lot? Like, were their matches lost because that was taken out or no? 
I would actually say you're probably right in that sense. Like, I was also judging as well because uh, Conte needed help. And uh, when I did judge, I would say more, more often than not, there weren't really any matches that did have Bay's bounce in. The only one I can actually remember right now was when I played Broyito in the domination format and we both used our attack Bay's. I'm like, I was re watching footage like kind of recently, and I think my guilty might have knocked his ultimate into a pocket like once, but he came back in, and then that match ended up being a tie because they both like stopped spinning at the same time. But other than that, yeah, I would feel it was, I would definitely say it was not really important. I just prefer mm -hmm. like not having that like rule, like possibility, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mike, did, were you saying the same thing? So were you judging too? Yeah, I, I did some judging as well. Yeah. Did it look the same on, on your aspect? Did you see a lot of the back wall? or? No, I, I didn't see a lot of... I, I think I might have saw it happen, like, once. Um, yeah. And even then, like, you know, I, I don't even remember in the end who won that match, but it wasn't really a big deal to myself or... um, It didn't even seem like it was a big deal to the players that were playing. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, um... Well, it's solid. It's solid. And the, the main event was was pick three, choose one, correct? Correct? Yes. Yeah. Up until uh, top oh, eight, I think. God, I hated pick three, choose one. So yeah, no. I hate it, too. <laughs> I hate pick three, choose one. <laughs> At least, okay, okay. Pick three, choose one for a burst standard was horrible. Like, mm -hmm. absolutely horrible. It was, it, it's just... Because you just, you just played BDR. Like, there was no yeah. reason to do it. Like, you, you just played BDR. And I mean, then you have like your counter to BDR in case you were scared that they'd pick it. But then mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like you get into your own head and you're like, well, I might as well just pick the BDR because it's pro it's got the highest chance at even beating its own counter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like BDR was the safest in the sense that like if I was, let's say I was playing Crisis for, for Victory Choose One and like we've, we've probably wrote like running some variation of the Maryland deck, we'll just say. So I'd, like PLT, World Undrift, and then BDR. So I have to guess whether he's going to play BDR or not. Or let's just say, let's just assume he will play BDR. I'd have to, I'd probably throw out World then, I guess, instead of, instead of throwing out my own BDR in that sense. But if I, I'm not sure that he's playing BDR and he might play Guilty, then it's probably just safer just to throw out my own BDR combo and play the same spin matchup. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, in that sense, it's not really, there's like counters to it, but it's like, in the end, it's just safer to both play BDR and then hope your, like, hope your launcher strength is stronger, your BDR is better, stuff like that. Yeah, that's where that's where like three on three would have just been like the better format because mm -hmm. you can have you'd have BDR you'd have your BDR combo and then like if someone's confident enough with attack and think okay I'm gonna get enough like r actual KOs with this this is worth running and then what other stamina stuff do you use like you got to figure something else out to run you're not gonna mm -hmm. run a solid non direction changing world combo. Yeah, you know, yeah. so you know, then creativity has to actually come into play, and you actually have to think. And that BDR is only guarantee you one point. Mm -hmm. So like, both players get one point, and then they have you know one more round where who whoever gets a point gets a point, and then what? Both of them then have no choice but to throw their BDR out there, mm -hmm. and see who wins. Like that, that's just how it goes. So like trying to see like if people would have played like an attack type instead within there and that gets matched up against their bdr that's like the safest chance they have at beating their bdr to get ahead in points mm -hmm. so. was on uh, and the 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 finals was not pick three choose one right it was no no the final you're talking about or it came to hill right yeah it came yeah to hell. it was just deck uh, okay. it, it it was one random round of five G. Oh sir. yeah, yes, that's one I lost. random uh, yeah. round of five G. Let's have this one random round of five G for the WBO for the WBBA players that came, that then none of them made it because they had to play an entire tournament of WBO. Yeah, <laughs> at least three on three would have been within their realm. They could have also topped. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I think, yeah, I know we talked about it before. Now it's like, yeah, think about it more. Um, I think 3v3 through, if not the whole thing, 3v3 through the first stage, because that is the mutual. Um, or the, I would say that's a universal format, 3v3. 
you know uh, Every- it's fair enough yeah 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 it's it's universal format yeah we i'm I'm sure it would have been a lot more different results we just ran a 3v3 tournament um it was a lot of fun it took a long time but it was a whole lot of fun um i really enjoyed it it probably didn't take that long i just had so much stuff heavy on my mind um it's probably the same length as any other tournament but yeah i think that would have been the universal thing and then maybe if you want to change it up you can do deck and finals or you can keep it all 3v3 i don't know Mm -hmm. um I mean, I, I, I think I think for like a WBO championship deck format is still like the format to yes. make people play at least in top cut. I would agree. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's I don't think it's the same in X, you know. So w- w- when we get to talking about X, I do not think deck format will work in X. Okay. Oh, really? That's interesting. I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah. Think I think I know what you're what you're going to say. We can. Uh, um, yeah, we'll leave that for. Uh, when we yeah. Get there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I do want to discuss that now. That's interesting. Yeah, I um, yeah. Did y'all have anything else on BWC? Because I was gonna just, I guess, brief over my my last tournament. Now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, oh, nothing crazy. It was just again. I feel like I've said this so many times. It was great to go down there and see everyone. And also, big shout out to Conse for hosting this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. He, he he put it together and it was a three-day event uh i need to look at some videos or some photos um i didn't really see the whole gist of it i was on challenge um i know everyone i talked to though said they had a blast mm-hmm. and that's definitely what's up i know con uh con say when he does his thing like he really does his thing and puts 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 on a good show um got so many people together to be able to play so i know there was a lot of love it's always a great experience, I think, when you get like so many people in one spot with your hobby and with Beyblade would be in such a niche hobby, you know, because this one thing with the trading card games, you know, it's like you can get hundreds or hundreds of thousands of people just to show up on a whim to try to win. But Beyblade is a little bit more difficult. So when you get so many people that's all ages, different regions together, like it's it's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um so yeah, all I want to say on my, my last event. So I ran three v three, and it was pretty much it was all WBBA, no back wall K O rule, two points for um KO, two points for burst, and I kind of like that. Some of the matches were going, they were going quickly. Um, we had rotational changes was allowed. You get one rotational changing bay, um. And I didn't run into any issues. Have y'all ran into? Actually, I I did run into one issue, but it wasn't too big of a deal. Have y'all ran that format? Like I know you have, Mike, but have you played it armor, um, at all? I've only played it once at our uh, unranked MFL event. This was in New York, I think. Uh, it was this year, like three months ago, I think. That's the only time I played it. It was a uh, actually no, I take that back. There was an event sniper held like two two years ago outside of the uh, WBO, and I also played 3v3 there. So okay. my overall experience of it is, like, relatively positive. I would definitely at least rank it over a pick three, choose one. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, and uh, I did want to, Bay the Blade, I know you said you didn't, uh, you haven't been to an official tournament. Have you done anything, like, just unofficial? Um. Yeah, no, I have not. I just, yeah, I've just mostly been, um, you know, well, I feel like I'm having so much stuff here. So yeah, I unfortunately don't have too much of a knowledge on those type of things, but um yeah. It's all good, brother. It's all good. Um uh yeah, when I ran it when we ran it when we had it, it's uh it was fun. This was it was the most random thing. I was judging and um one of my judges, he uh he he looked back at me, he was like, How do you feel? about people when they're trying to balance tune when they're doing their test launch or something like that. And I didn't understand this question. I was like, I don't, I was like, what? And uh, he was like, yeah, well, I, like I had did it. And shout out hashtag Fafnir. Um, and I was like, I, I didn't really know what he was saying until I did finals. And I was like, yeah, I mean, if you're running it um, for your events, like just do it however you feel. And he was like, um, all right, Roger that. So we continued to uh, we continued to play, and then we got the finals, and then I started judging, and and I saw what he meant, and it could be me just being me, 
with competition and for time. But after I saw it, I was like, oh, we're going to have to talk next tournament because I don't want to do this again. Um, what ended up happening was, you know, you get like, do you let people test launch, Mike? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if, if it gets to be a little too much, then I might, you know, end up, you know, on like the third time, be like, no, you can't test launch anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think that's what was I know that was what was going on. I always let people test launch. Um, and it was 3v3 or even deck, any of the formats. It's like, yeah, I'll, you can always test launch. I think it's harder on 3v3 um, because if you want to test launch every single bay. But it's like, it's whatever. But when the balance tuning came in, then I was like, oh, hold on. Wait a minute, bro. Because they were test launching, but their test launch was to see, like, because most, most test launching I had seen in the past was for attack. Mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that you're not just going to sell KO yourself, see how the stadium is moving, things like that. Some people would do it with stamina just to make sure they're not that, um, that the stadium isn't messed up or anything like that. But they were, um, and I don't know if you do this, Mike, um, but they, when they were test launching, uh, they were um, hand spinning to see like the balance of the bay. And then they would take it out, readjust it, be like test launch, Take it out, readjust. They were balanced. Oh yeah, no, no, we we don't. We don't that, that's we, a big no-no. Yeah, yeah, we've, no, yeah. we've, we've Ooh, never had we've yeah. never had anyone there like trying to balance tune on the spot. Like, no. I, yeah, yeah. And I, and I, don't see much something I'm, you should I'm, do beforehand. Exactly, exactly what I was. Yeah, saying. like <laughs> like balance like yeah. balance tuning. Like I I get it if like like I still wouldn't allow it, but I understand if like what it is is the person you know just then learned about balance tuning. So then they were trying to figure it out, and their match got called, and they're like, "Well, wait, let me try to see if the combo's balanced." You know, like yeah. I, I get it, but the answer would yeah. still be no. Yeah. Like, you'd be like, look, buddy, you know, I get you just learned about balance tuning, but just get this match yeah. over with, and then go ahead and start doing it. But in all reality, to really balance tune, it takes a lot of time. Yes, it does. It, take, does. it does take a lot of time. But uh, and I was gonna give these. I'm gonna say these tips now, and I'm not coming at you, buddy. You you are my homeboy. Hashtag Fafnir, love you, Def. Um, uh, it's just once I figured out what it was, and this was my response um, to it, and why we won't be doing it in the future. So test launches, I'm, I'm, I am going to limit them to just like one test launch, but like typically just one test launch, and that's pretty much for time. But when it comes to balance tuning, I'm thinking, and it, it is for time, but I'm also thinking more of that competitive standpoint. It's like what Mike and Armor just said. Once you once you get to the stadium, um, like it's it's I, I equated it to, you know, you're playing a basketball game or something. And right before Steph Curry or you'll say Michael Jordan takes a shot. He's like, hey, man, can y'all give me a break real quick? I want to practice my free throws right in the middle of the game. Mm -hmm. you no. Know, so it's like once you get to the stadium, uh, all of the all of the testing should be out the window. Um, all of the. Um, uh, whatever should be out the window. And I, I kind of get it because. I know they were adjusting when they would go from high to low mode. But one thing I do, like if I was the balance tune, and this is something that we can do, you can use your stickers to indicate mm -hmm. uh, or to help you to, to know like where to put your layer at, um, your layer, your disc, and, and your driver, um, or even your chip, which you wouldn't be taking your chip out uh, typically. That should always be said. But you'll do that. Um, I don't know if this is illegal or not, because I know we can't use paint on our Beyblades. But I have used a permanent marker just to put a little dot and the dots line up to where they're supposed to go. So I know that's something, at least at my events, if anyone else wants to run it different, um, they can feel free to. But I don't want, to, I'm like, we're balance tuning, especially in the finals, because um, I'm a little bit more strict in the finals. I don't give any free KOs there. It's like, it's a point. You, by the time you get there, you, you have your stuff together and you're good to go. Um, you should be able to come up you want to do a test launch just to see how it performs in that specific stadium or whatever. You're good, and then it's, let's go. But yeah, I didn't know if I was crazy. I was, I was, I was glad y'all, y'all on the same page as me. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Yeah. Between hats during the tournament, so. <laughs> yeah. I can um, definitely say up until BWC was a, a lot of balance tuning that I did. <laughs> Maybe not as crazy as I think some of the other players, but uh, I did spend a fair amount of time on that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I um 
I don't do it as much. I'm not, um, I haven't been as focused as I, as I, as I was, um, I've been more hosting. I didn't even, I didn't compete at this last event, mm -hmm. but I did have a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot of love. It was right after the announcement with the store. Everyone was understanding. Uh, shout out to Fireblader and your whole family. Um, appreciate uh, y'all every time y'all come out. Appreciate what you did. It was it was a big and major thing, and, and, and it showed a lot of love. I really appreciate mm -hmm. that. Um, but everybody, yeah, everybody was real understanding and and um, patient, and they were they were hype. I think they were hype also for the fact that I was gonna you know continue to host and. Um, they were, I, I believe, happier about that, which, which you know, put a smile on my face. It's like, yeah, just the, the store is gone, but we still get to, we still get to enjoy the, the, um, this hobby, and and mm -hmm. that was a lot. Of, that was, that was really good news. So we got our photos in, um, had fun, got out there early, um, left. I think it was over around four, or so. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was a whole bunch of fun, and then X. Uh, hashtag Fastener also brought out some plastics and some metal fight, which I think he's having a tournament soon. I didn't get to play with him because I think he had packed up by the time I was done and I completely forgot and we left. We had uh Dark Mousy, who I don't think y'all know him, but he's um Geister 99 knows him. He used to play metal fight, he came out. So, our our local scene, like as I'm looking at it, it's like it's 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 definitely growing. Um, and I'm happy about that, but yeah, did y'all uh, um, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm real happy about that. I, um, did y'all, uh, y'all want to kick off X? Because I feel yeah, like, sure. like there's a lot to discuss about X. I, oh, um, yeah, there is a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll let you. You good to kick this one off, uh, Mike? Because I know you dealt with X. To, actually, y'all could discuss it. I, I want to learn. I want to learn about X because I don't have anything with X. I'm about to order put an order in real soon for the items because I want to have a tournament in September. But what are some things y'all have seen? What do you like? What have you played with? What's going on in the Beyblade X world? Probably going to have to let uh, uh, Pay the Blade kick this one off because uh, okay. I think he's a lot more into it than I am. All right. Okay. Well, I mean, the first thing, I mean, it kind of has to do with, you know, the uh, productions. But, you know, a lot of people don't have their X days yet, so it's, you know, it's really a struggle to kick things off, and, you yeah. know, in that way. Um, so, yeah, pers I do have X products, but, you know, like I said, I haven't been going to turn or anything like that, so I haven't tested it against someone. But um, the base themselves, they're really fun to play with. Um, okay. I really like, honestly, I think I like pretty much all of them. I think probably uh, what well, John Sword is, like, really strong. Um, Hell's Side yeah. looks good. The Wizard Arrow. Night Shield, I don't know about Night Shield personally, but I know uh, Zinkies and he works Night Shield. Um, so yeah, they're just an <laughs> yeah. interesting group of babies. <laughs> um, yeah. And then actually, pretty soon, like next week, Night Lance is releasing some, maybe another baby into the mix. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's just interesting um, to see where this goes. But yeah, it's just kind of a struggle because a lot of people don't have it. Baby. So you do, uh, you so do have the same, right? Yeah, I had the stadium, but um, I got the start dash set with um, the launcher and the grip, and then I have um, all the bays and drawnsers. So yeah. Okay. Did you get it from Mall of Toys or Bays and Bricks? Um, I actually got it from neither. I got it from Amazon Japan. Oh, okay, okay, solid, solid. I know that will come to you quick. Yeah. I wanted to tell you at at one point in time, because Bays and Bricks, you know, they're in Cali. Yeah, I have used them before, and I probably will be using them in the future. Um, yeah. It's just that I was ordered from Amazon Japan, like, ever since I um, joined the, the Beyblade community on Discord and all that. So, like, since Sparking released. So, yeah, it was oh. just uh, consistent. Yeah, it was really consistent for a while. I know there was a point when COVID was, like, heavy and the shipping was having trouble then, but it has, mm -hmm. has kind of picked up a bit, so I've been I tried using it for accent. It came relatively early, so that's how good. fast do you get it? Um, I got it like let me see, like so the week after X came out, I got it like on Tuesday or Wednesday, one of those days. It was pretty quick. So oh, so it released on Saturday. You got it by Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, 
yeah, actually, no, no. Yeah, it was Wednesday or Tuesday. So, yeah, it was that was pretty quick considering the problems, you know, a lot of other people. Yeah, that's solid. I, I'm only asking because, I mean, I, I know a lot of um, stores and sources, um, but I haven't ever ordered from um, Amazon Japan. Uh, you use a VPN for that? I don't know if I'm, is that illegal to um, say? Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I I don't no I don't use a VPN. You can just um if you have Amazon, you just change the country settings to Japan, and you can oh okay uh, order that way. All right. Yeah, you All have right. to make well, sure it, they can look at your address. But okay, my bad. I was yeah. Get you confessed. <laughs> no, I can confess too. What are you too, doing? Out like, how are you getting these papers? From? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, I because I'm I I want to be able to get them and um be able to get them legitly because i am going to put in my plan right now i want to get two of the no four of the triple booster sets mm -hmm. um i have mm -hmm. i have two stadiums um those were stadiums that were that we actually did were able to get because we got the only product we did we didn't get any beyblades but we got stadiums and um oh, wow yeah we got yeah. stadiums grips and um the deck boxes which uh shout out the 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 um um shin dog you know he um definitely showed a, showed a lot of love through this uh but yeah we got them all we got all that in i kept two stadiums for myself because i'm going to be using that the host and yeah. um shout out to everyone that did show support and love uh when we opened up our store for this week but um yeah so i'm going to i'm going to use those stadiums um i have a couple more grip grips for the launchers but i want to get four of the triple booster sets and then i need to probably get like four or five of the starters and that's mainly just to get the launchers um do you have the the battle set or do you have just a regular uh ripcord launcher um no i got the set so yes i have the string launcher and the grip is there a difference in the performance um from what I could tell, I mean, actually, this is more so off of what I've been hearing, but a lot of people actually say the red core might still be slightly stronger. So, um, yeah, I don't know, but like both, like the red core and the string launcher both feel good. So, um, okay, I don't think there's too big an issue there. Yeah. I'll actually uh, speak up now because uh, I did have the opportunity to at least try X since the, you uh, did? the last talk. Yeah, because uh, again, thanks to Mr. Memes, our New Jersey host. He got some of the stuff. I hung out with him, uh, I think it was like last Thursday. And then at our uh, Metal Fight Limited event, which we had on Saturday, he brought it again for us to uh, play with. But yeah, I do think I like the Ripcord better, actually, which is, I think, surprising to a lot of people. You do? Yeah, that's what I mean. Does it feel like it just has more more, more torque to it? Um... It's just, it's very nice to pull, because I guess for me, I like the resistance that it gives when it pulls. But I know some people don't like that. Okay. Yeah, it feels like satisfying it's, to pull. Okay. Yeah, it's a really good rip core launcher. Like, um, it you know, and you don't even need a grip because it gives you a lot of room, unless you have like mm -hmm. really big hands. But still, like, it gives you a lot of room, and the um, the gear it just spins like pretty freely, so it's um, not too hard to launch. So yeah, really, really good starting rip core launcher. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, I um, I did see that it. Like I saw the launcher in the hands of not just kids but adults in some of the videos. I know it's bigger, which is solid because I know they're catering to adults as well. Um, and I know like the issues that I had with the Takara Tomy older ripcord launchers, like they would be good at first, um, but then they would start skipping gears, like mm -hmm. the long light launchers. Uh, do y'all think that? I know this is fairly new, but did these feel like built a little to be a little bit more durable, durable or? I think it depends because actually I have four different ripcore launchers and some of them seem a bit like already worn compared to others. Ooh, so I think if you just, I think if you have like, um, like one that's already good, I don't think it'll like, you know, become dust like super quick. But if you hit, yeah. happen to get a bad, you know, um, mold for a launcher or something, then that's, I guess that's just kind of unfortunate. You yeah. might want to use another one or something. Yeah, as a, as I'm saying this and listening to you too, I mean, it's not like they're I mean they're toys and they do get played with pretty rough. They're not going to be eternal, and this is also like mm -hmm. the first wave of them, so I wouldn't be expecting because it was the same thing with 
you know, throughout verse, like things kind of started off um, a little bit smaller, lackluster, um, not as um, durable. And then we ended up with DB, BU, um, to where I yeah. think those, those, those string launchers, I haven't broke one yet. I, I've seen them be break, be broken, but I haven't broke one yet. And I've broken a string launcher in every other series. <laughs> um, so it'll, they'll get better in, in, in time, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Did y'all have a, uh, oh, no, you good. Um, so you said, and it's funny. So Mike had to just step away for a second. Uh, but I was going to let him bring up drawn, drawn sword. Um, he could talk about it. That's why he was, um, well, I, I'll let him speak on it, but you said drawn sword was the, the best one. Is that what you were saying? Um, Blade? Yeah. Like from what I can tell John sword, you know, and, he actually was mentioning it um, earlier before he joined too. Like it's okay. just heavier than all the other bays, and it just mm -hmm. you know hits really hard. So it's easy for it to you know hit the other bays into the pockets, whether it be the extreme zone or the um, KO pockets. So yeah, mm -hmm. it definitely has an advantage over the other bays. Um, you know, still anything can happen. So um, yeah. as the X meta you know evolves, then mm -hmm. we'll just see where it goes from there. But yeah, at the moment John Sword is near the top yeah 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 i'm man i'm looking forward to it what was your what was your favorite or, or like experience or what you got to test with as well armor uh i only got to use uh what is it night shield um wizard arrow and drawn sword like we did have health sites available but i didn't really get to play around with it uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it just felt weird using all of them. It was definitely fun, especially since like how high speed and high impact they are. But it's like I couldn't really grasp like any like competitive aspect out of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like everyone says, like drawn sword is like super strong and like it like just always gets the hits in. But like I didn't really have that success myself. I guess. Oh, what uh, what was it? What was your experience like then? Um, like from when you were playing, was it just like? Was it just like like a fun free for all, or were people like? Uh, there was only like four of us there actually that day, and there was like one oh, okay. stadium. We weren't like going ham at it. It was just like like chill enough for us to always like take turns and like play one v ones. But um, what is it? But yeah, I mean, I did like mess around with combos a little bit. I do feel like I like tapered better than flat. Like I like the controllability a little better, and it still like gives yeah, that's the, fair. Like, power and hits that I like want to see when I use attack. But I mean, other than that, I didn't really have a preference to anything. Mm, that's solid. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so y'all had already talked about it. Yeah, I know Mike was with the draw sword. That's why he didn't want to do the three v three. I mean, he didn't want to do one v one at least in his region because Maryland. I think they had a big turnout for the testing. And um, drawn sword was just overpowered. It was just smacking every other bay around. So it was like, because I was planning on doing one v one. I was only going to get. Um, I was still going to get four of the triple boosters, but I uh, was just going to do one v one. Like you get time, but he was like, dude, because if you go up there and you're and you're only using drawn sword, um, like that's all you really need to use if it's one v one. And whoever just at that point, I guess, gets lucky or knows uh the positioning of their launch then they win um but we'll we'll see because our tournament i don't i think people didn't want to have it ranked and i'm honestly going to talk to them about ranked because i'm i don't really want to do ranked i know it's fun but for the sake of the community um and also myself it's a lot more effort and if we're just getting there and we're playing locals and we just have a solid prize. I don't really see the point of ranked. I guess you can put yourself up against everyone else in the country, but at the same time, it's like, dude, let's just go and have fun. But that's just my opinion. Um, but I don't think ours. I, well, I know I'm not going to do our our first one is ranked. We're probably just going to do regular three v three and play with the same point system as uh, Japan and and just go from there. Um, no, I think I kind of agree with what you're doing. Again, to me, it doesn't really feel like something we can really do for ranked. It's something yeah. for fun. Yeah, yeah, especially uh, right mean, now, like it's so yeah, fun. definitely. Yeah, are y'all um, are you uh, do you have any plans in the near future or Mister Memes or anybody for having an event, or do you think do you even think you're gonna play with X like that, or you're just gonna see how? Oh, uh, 
It's actually funny you brought that up because uh, we've already gotten, or he's already planned for our first X event, which will be in uh, the 26th, actually, for this month. It's called the uh, okay. first experience. So it's going to give like everyone essentially a first experience of what X is going to be like. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, he'll have like a few lenders out there for people who can't, like who won't have X. So I'll just like borrow off of him from then and uh, we'll see where how that goes. But again, I think it's like their releases haven't really changed since then. So I don't think my opinion will change either. And we'll just have to wait until like more releases come out and see how those affect the meta if we can grab one out of there. Some can happen too. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, mm -hmm. it can happen if y'all have a uh, like a large turnout or a bigger turnout. So maybe someone, maybe it might even be you, um, figures out what no one else is seeing, and that's what I'm kind of waiting for. For whoever to find out either where that placement is or the combo to be able to beat the other ones. But if it's like three, four months down the line, and it's the same thing of not i don't want to say complete rng or luck mm -hmm. but uh if it's the same thing like three or four months down the line then it's kind of like it's kind of set like okay um we can play we can try to do placement but you kind of don't know what's going to happen once these baby leads hit the ridge or once they really get going mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we'll see but, i think once uh once we the first left spin day i know things are really going to change oh yeah 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 um, did you, uh, beta blade when you were playing, you were, mm. I'm, I'm sure doing self testing. Did you test the, like the angle of your launch or the positioning of where you put the bay blade at all? And did that make a difference? If so, um, sort of, I think, um, depending on where you launch, it might be a bit too, like if you launch a certain angle and the bay will go straight into one of the pockets, especially the X pocket. Cause it's like. Kind of like there's a wall blocking it, but it's still a big pocket, so you got to kind of avoid that, I think. Um, mm -hmm. and then also, depending on where you launch it, like I know there's a like a ridge that goes towards the center, but sometimes it might like not go exactly where you think because of how the X gimmick works. So mm -hmm. I think there are there's a bit of you know, um, optimization for you to launch, but. I think uh, at the moment it's still kind of hard to tell uh, what yeah. to do exactly. Did did y'all see a lot of like last second KOs? Or what? I have, or like, uh, like personally, I've seen you know some of my babies like get knocked out um, at the last second. Um, I think I actually recorded a battle. Like I don't know, I'm not sure which bay it was, but like Wizard Arrow knocked out Hellsight at the last second, or the other way around. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that happens. That happens like probably not, you know, super often, but you know, it's not uncommon. Yeah, Hell Sight is the red one, right? The red starter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, I was hoping that that was the coolest looking one to me. I know. I'm, yeah, me too. I like that one too. Yeah, I'm. I'm a nerd like that too. I tend to use just what looks cool to me instead of what's good. <laughs> so yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. I'll uh, I, I I'm I'm sure I'll be using that and trying to force it to work. Um, that's how I've always been. I'm not big into the mana. Like I will play the mana, um, but it's typically if if it's what looks cool to me or what I personally like, and if that happens to be within the realm of the mana, then I'll play it. Because I mean, I don't even have wind, um, mm -hmm. which I do think wind looks cool, but um, mm -hmm. I just don't use it because I like my other Beyblades more. Um, oh. I would say I I am interested in seeing Hell Scythe uh, to see what I can try to do with it, um, if I can do anything. But I've got to get these Beyblades. I'm probably gonna oh, man. I, I might as well go ahead and order them tonight. I can still play with my kids, and um, we can have fun. With my eldest son, and then we have a mm -hmm. tournament now. Um, did you see Armored? Were y'all seeing any last second KOs? And I'm only asking this because I want to know how heavy the R RNG truly is. Oh, no, no, I understand. Uh, I feel like that wasn't really the case for us. I feel like you could definitely see some, like, maybe later into the match compared to Burst, because you could maintain your power just by hitting the bridge again and generating, mm -hmm. like, like a, the ability to actually, like, smack them into the pocket. But, I mean, other than that, it wasn't really, like, any super late KOs, I think. Mm. Okay. All right. I know... Um... Well, this is, yeah, 
That is solid. I'm oh, man. I'm hype about it. I'm hype mm-hmm. about it. Do y'all have any control on when you when you hit the ridge as far as banking and trying to get it on the ridge and anything? It's it's definitely. I would say if you flat launch, you're gonna like hit the ridge like fairly quickly. And versus if you bank, you're gonna actually yeah. like stall or like avoid the ridge for a little bit. Mm-hmm. This obviously only applies to like your flat type tips. Like I I think most people struggle, me included, to like make the ball or needle hit uh bits like hit the the ridge. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because it yeah, yeah, that makes sense, you know, because they wouldn't ride up like yeah flat ones is gonna typically act like attack. Um and just go a little bit wilder. But the 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 you said the ball and needle one, they were just staying in the center. Yeah, like the ball one will move around a little bit, but it's not like enough to like make it go all the way up and hit the, like the the ridge with the track on it. Mm-hmm. And it's the I know the ball in this meta is or for X is supposed to be stamina, and the needle is defense, correct? Yeah, at least that's what yeah. it's classified as. I'm not sure in terms of use if you would actually use them like that. Yeah, how was it working for you? Uh. I would probably still say ball is better for both, honestly. Okay. Yeah. That makes that makes a lot of sense. And I think one you... gripe I actually do want to point out about the whole X system is the way the bit is attached, because it can just fall out, and that still counts as a burst finish, despite you not actually like taking the respective like click system to like come apart. Okay. What do you mean yeah. like fall out? So it's basically when you put an X bay together, you would attach the ratchet and the uh, blade together, and then you would just push the bit in. Is that correct, uh, Beta Blade? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure, like, because I'm maybe there's like another way to do it, but I'm, but you can also just pull the ratchet. I'm not the ratchet. The bit out just like that, and that can happen in matches, like if it gets hit hard enough, I guess. Even though, like, yes, you got burst in the sense that you got hit and came apart, but it's not like the way, intended way it was supposed to come apart. So I really like don't like that sense, and I feel like it also adds to the RNG. It was like. Oh, you got hit in this. Not even. I'm not even sure if it's like hit in a certain specific way, but it's just hit, and then your bit falls out. Oh man. Okay. I think I think I know what you're saying. I think I'm gonna have to um, play with it a little bit more. But you're saying mm-hmm. from the way you put it together, just if it hit that, like technically, it's not a real burst, but you fall apart, so you kind of yeah. burst. Because okay. when you when you were supposed to burst, it's supposed to be you're supposed to get hit on your ratchet, and your ratchet and bit will stay together and fall off of the blade. It's almost like in terms of burst, if your disc and driver stayed together, if that mm-hmm. makes sense, yeah. So yeah. your layer would like fly apart, like fly off, or it would come apart in that sense. But the bottom two pieces would stay together. Like that's how it's intended to come apart. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I can. I'm still. I'm. I think I'm. I think I'm more excited to just get these things in my hand. I think once I start playing, like if it's just all RNG, I think it still might be fun to play for us um but i think on the competitive aspect if people want to do bursts still um we'll probably do that but i'm definitely ready to get these into my hand and and to see how it goes because just um i know right now you know everything going on um with the store and just hey i was hyped up and ready to play what i'm ready to like physically have them in my hands and to see them so that got delayed so now i want them even more um and then i want to be able to get my own some of my own test results and, and theories because i spoke with you spoke with mike um and then uh i don't know go for, go for my judgment from there um to see what y'all are talking about and then just just also be able to validate uh, my own opinions but it'll take some time i know we're not going to have an event till next month um but shoot what's today friday if i order yeah, it yeah yeah, I could order them tonight. And I'll have them by next week, and I'm off next week, so I can mm-hmm. nerd out and play with my uh, play with my kids. Um, still might have to get maybe one extra stadium. Now that I'm thinking about it, because I like to have a testing stadium and then stadiums for tournament mm-hmm. specific. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, like since I think you said you're not like as much into the competitive aspect, is that correct? No, no, no. I, I am I am heavily into the competitive aspect. Okay, um, never mind then. But uh, I would at least say, like, if you also want to play for fun, regardless, I would definitely recommend, like, getting the product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. if you want to just play with your kids, you know, or even uh, still help host tournaments and whatever, like, 
it's definitely gonna yeah. be a good time. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be I'm still gonna um be hosting 100. percent I think I, it just depends on the community. Like if the community are heavily involved with, they want the hardcore competition, and X isn't delivering on that. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think everyone is gonna have fun with it, but for some of the players, and I would honestly feel like this too, um, if you know you're a heavy competitor and then you keep losing to randomness, it kind of like takes, it'll take that fun away. And mm -hmm. I get it, people have like the argument to be like, oh, let's, we'll just play Beyblade or play anything as long as you're doing it, it's fun. But when it does come to aspects of competition, like the fun is in the um the challenge and the tactics and to be able to put your testing to use and if you spend hours upon hours on testing or like imagine you spend hours hours upon balance tuning and then you just show up and just random stuff just is just happening all day so it's like really what's the point of this if i could just come in here and maybe win or maybe lose mm -hmm. so if that happens with X Heavy, I could see us um, it dwindling away from our community. Um, like, stand for the people that just want to come to play, and then we might just focus on Burst. But I'm going to let that be a decision for the community. I'm not going to make that myself because um, I am heavily involved in competition, but I also know at, at, at this point in time, my focus is more so on just running the events. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. I, I am I am so sorry, guys. I, <laughs> no, good. I you came. You, you came back <laughs> at the uh, perfect time. Like we were talking about X, um, and I feel bad because I, I'm the only one up here <laughs> who hasn't played with them or seen them. And I was asking them questions, and uh, uh, they 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 played with them. Uh, they they give me their experiences, and um, now we get to hear we get to hear yours. Oh, cool. Yeah, Beyblade Act. Um, all right, so... Okay, so I, I, I've been really practicing with Beyblade X uh, the past, like... Uh, what was that? I got the stuff on Monday. So, yeah, it's been about five days. Like, I've been practicing with it every day. Uh, also, quick, um, I have to shout out Alan Schaefer for this because he is lending me his stadium so I can test because I still don't have my stadium yet. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Shout out so, to Alan. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Alan. Uh is my my hero. Um <laughs> okay, so everything that I know about Beyblade has literally been flipped upside down with that. Mm -hmm. Um so I the way I, like the way me the way I explained it to Geetster and everything in our group chat when we were talking, traditional Beyblade, at least from like where I've been playing has kind of gone in the way of your combo mattered most and then your blader skill mattered and then um luck factors kicked into play. Like, you know, whether you inched out just that little bit of extra spin or, you know, you just happen to hit them at the right spot at the right time to get a KO or something like that. Like that that was kind of like the way it went down the line. Because combos made a big difference. Like, if I was playing something on BDR and you were playing something on, you know, never, you're losing. I'm sorry. Uh, like, yeah. like, let's be real. So the combo made a big factor. And then mm -hmm. the skill factor came in next because if you guys had the same two combos, the person that could launch harder or place it in the right area or balance tune more or something, that mattered next. And then, like I said, last was luck. Now it's literally flipped. Luck is actually probably the biggest factor in Beyblade X currently, whether you get, you know, hit hard and flung into a pocket or not, because I, I, I have played with a bunch of different combinations, and it doesn't matter what the combo is, it, it can get knocked out, it can get knocked out fairly easy, mm -hmm. it, can, it can resist being knocked out as well, your own Beyblade can get stuck on the track and fling itself out very easily. <laughs> So the luck factor is literally the biggest thing right now as to whether you are going to win a match or not. And then next will come, once again, player skill as to where you launch the Beyblade to try and not have it, you know, self-KO or maybe, you know, miss the initial hit of the, of, of the opponent's um, bay. 
Um, and then finally, like I said, the combo, because literally the combos at this point all kind of just do the same thing. They ride the rail and try to hit things, or they just try to stay in the center, but then if they get hit hard enough, they're going to clip that rail and ride the rail. Yeah. So, like, Beyblade has literally been flipped on its head, in my opinion. Um, I will say, though... This is the first time I think in Beyblade history that defense will have a actual big play. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think defense is going to be a very big thing in this game. Um, I just can't wait to see how they get it implemented a little better. Yeah. I almost want to say we're not really going to have like a stamina meta game in the sense that like being KO'd is such a large risk now. It's just you have a combo that can knock things out and a combo that's designed to not get knocked out. Yep. Yeah. Um that's why yeah. that's why actually currently um I like Wizard Arrow a lot because it's so mm. smooth. When you get into like those end of battle like where they st- happen to stay in the sa- stadium and they're getting a little slow, Wizard Arrow just reduces the amount of like recoil that ends up happening. Mm. Because it's so it's so it's more smooth than any of the others. Mm-hmm. So I've been I've been using that a lot with um 460 and Ball. Yeah, I wanted to say, uh, I so when I know like leading up to X, and I I know I was always up here. I'd be like, oh man, I'm I'm sure they got straight. I'm sure they thought of it. This and that. Those were really high hopes. I saw the red flags like you did, Mike. I saw all, all the like red flags would be like, man, I should. This 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 looks very RNG. It just does look like a big luck factor. But I was still just hoping for the best and now that it's officially out and you know um because i was asking armor the same and beta blade from his testing that like any last second ko's beta blade said he was seeing a lot Ar- armor said he wasn't as much but just the the randomness of it i think Ar- yeah armor said that he was running the issues with sometimes the base not technically bursting but falling apart just because of the design that they are um once they got hit and those factors it is wild because it seems like, in, when would you say, like, flipped upside down? Because it's like, when we had bursts in older generations, they didn't cater to adults for those. But those were more, like, non, like... There was more strategy. They were less, yeah, they were more strategy and, like, less of the just having a fun gimmick. Where this one is starting to seem like this is just having fun with Beyblade gimmick. And they're trying to turn this one into the sport. Which is um yeah that's honestly weird but yeah who knows who knows what they have planned (laughs) yeah because before it was like this was this was a hobby it was a gaming hobby um people looked at them as toys maybe from the outside and they are toys but it was more of a like a gaming hobby on the competitive scene but now it just feels like or is looking like at least I'm talking to y'all just fun toys um but well. I mean, I think we'll see in time. And that, that may be the thing. It, like I said, it just released, I think, with every initial release, or at least I know what burst. They were saying the Beyblades were bursting all over the place. With this, with, with X, I know that they wanted to have the factor of high-speed battles and attack. And that's what it's doing all day. And then well, when we got to the end of burst, no Beyblades were really bursting anymore. Mm-hmm. Probably when we get to <laughs> um, mid-season or probably sooner with X, they will have those heavy defense types. So you will have to, I don't know, work a little bit harder or do something or shoot. They may even get rid of, they may change the whole stadium in the gimmick to where the, the gears are, are not a thing anymore. I think that mm-hmm. in and of itself will completely change how this game is played if it doesn't have the gears. Um, but yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. And, and your take on Drawn Sword, because I think I talked about it good, but I remember you said um, it was just OP and why you didn't want to do, you advised me not to do 1v1. Yeah, so, okay, so Drawn Sword currently is probably the best um, Beyblade in the X generation. And the main reason for that, I think mostly boils down to its weight. Uh, yeah. Drawn, Drawn Sword is the heaviest one. Uh, the flat bit itself, like, it just... Based on the gimmick of the stadium, the flat bit just allows you to get more chances of getting the extreme finish than anything else. Um, and then the other thing is, is Strongsword actually just has the most like 
you know, jagged kind of shape for an attack type. Yeah. You know? So it, it just it has the right shape, the right weight, and the right tip. Um, it also comes with 360, and 360 and 460 are probably the best two ratchets in the game. Mm -hmm. Like if if you if you use the 380 or 480, when you get into that end game, if they lean over, that's it. It's over. Yeah. Like they're they're just gonna scrape faster than the 360 or the uh, 460, and that'll just pretty much be the end of the game. What did the numbers I mean? I know the 60 is like the height, right? And then yes. what's the 60 is the height, and then the three and the four is how many um like protrusions it has. Okay, for like resistance, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I guess that I guess technically it's sides. Uh, mm -hmm. It has yeah. three sides. Um, okay. I mean, but granted, like the sides themselves are like almost pretty much roundish, so they mm -hmm. could they can make it with more if they want or less. Even they could technically do two and three. I think about the height thing as well, actually. Uh, there's really no point in being high right now because you get burst by getting hit on your ratchet. So if you're taller, yep. that means you're exposing it more. Yep. Which is, yep. there's like, that's, there's no upsides as of right now to having a taller ratchet. Yeah, I, I, I want I want the uh, 350 and the 450 to be out. That's what I want. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I think 50 is supposed to be what will be the lowest one. Okay. Yeah, I've heard that too. I think yeah. 50 is supposed to be the lowest and 90 is supposed to be the tallest. Okay. Wait, okay. Uh, is the next product stuff still technically like leaks? I don't know if we want to get into that. But uh, now that you brought it up, I kind of want to talk about it. Well, oh, which ones? <laughs> what, Nightland? Uh, no, not Nightland? like like after that. After that. No, no, no. We could talk about it. I don't know. I don't know. Right. Yeah, uh, Shark Edge, let's go. Yeah, yeah, I want to talk about that. Oh, yeah, like, Shark what, Edge. Oh, Lord. I forget, like, what's on it again. Like, what the uh, actual combo is supposed to be. Like, no, I'm setting, like, the oh, random booster uh, card aside because I don't really care about that. Yeah, it's three. It's 360 um, oh, okay. low flat. Got it. Okay, yeah, so this is no, low flat being than... lower. Yeah. All right. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because um, this is me from the outside. I have no clue even <laughs> what y'all talk about. My, my Beyblade world has uh been caught up in the store lately so i want to get educated what have y'all seen what have y'all heard like what's going on right now with uh, the leaks so uh, after night lance which is coming out this month no mm -hmm. next week okay yeah so after that comes out we're getting our first x random booster and the prize pay for that will be shark edge so that's a new blade uh they said it comes on 360 so that's not a new uh a ratchet but it comes on low flat so which will be flat but shorter and mm -hmm. that's the part. Mm. Yeah. I'm not that's yeah, sure and the shape comes with anything else. I don't think so. Like yeah, no. uh, um, okay. the shape of the blade also looks like also really jagged, so it could be a contender to knock out Dragon Sword and it's a uh, you know Rome, I mean, so in all, in all reality, with the shape at that point, there you just you, you run Shark Edge 460 on low flat, and then because mm -hmm. it's got the upper attack portion to it as well, and then you just run Stock Dren Sword at 360 flat. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's go. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's two combos you got in your arsenal. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I will say it's more interesting that a lot of the like stock combos are actually pretty much good where they're at um mm -hmm. i was really convinced night lance was going to be good i did not realize it has a small piece of metal making it unbalanced oh yeah i heard about that too yeah i did not realize that until i got it and when that happened i was like well now this beyblade like like i mean i i put um i made sure to orient the 360 uh, um ratchet to where two of the like prongs are on the opposite side to try to balance it and it helps but it's not like fully balanced with it mm -hmm. so um but it does it does do pretty good on tapered i give it that um oh also the the bits oh my god the the amount of bursts this is that gave ball and needle is just so bad oh yeah it's so <laughs> bad okay, i was gonna Wait, I was gonna ask: Have you seen John Sword burst at all? Because I think it's the yeah. only one I've seen burst. Yeah, I, I I've seen John Sword uh, burst. Really? Wow. Yeah. 
the attack yeah. uh, so are the attack base having more like kind of burst res- or the flats are having more burst resistance than the salmon and so the flat flat and taper yeah. have um a lot more burst resistance than ball yeah. and needle and ball and needle are supposed to be the defense or in stamina, stamina. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. dang yeah they're easier to because um there's like this little what do you call it like at the top of the bit where you insert the bay um for taper and flat they have like a like a wider surface area or something yeah. like yeah it's harder to take out yeah, no, I've seen um I've seen Dranswords burst because when we were practicing with like 1v1, um, mm. like I would watch how like my opponent would launch sometimes, and if they just seemed like they were just flat launching a bunch, I would angle launch. So then I'm oh. hitting their ratchet. Uh, uh. You know, you know, I I was just um well I wasn't gonna say that, Mike, but I was just thinking just from the history with Beyblade, like Takara told me typically has one focus, like with DB, even though people were upset with the stadium, like the focus for that was stamina. Mm-hmm. And just with this initial thing, like the first initial release of Beyblade was burst. That's where everything was bursting. Maybe they don't want us to use defense and stamina. Maybe they just want us to go in there and go ham with attack and see who's the best mm-hmm. attacker. And that could be what it is. I mean, that's possible. It's just ev- eventually, no matter what, they're going to have to improve stamina and defense. Otherwise, you're going to have a super boring game. Yeah. 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 It's like attack is fun, but when, it, it, when it's like the only thing you play, I guess it loses its like novelty. Yeah. Real, real I quickly, though, because I mean, we were, all, we were only playing stamina for the longest of time. I guess I in mean, everyone's ideal world, you have a, like a perfect game where like everything is used. I mean, yeah. like, okay, so. This is this is the thing I've got to say. Like Geetzer has said it a lot too. Like imagine playing Beyblade Burst with just attack types. Do you know how boring that gets? Mm-hmm. It gets super boring because sometimes, like a lot of times, you you don't get like that quick hit and something gets KO'd. You get like maybe one big hit and then they're just tornado stalling the rest of the game. Yeah. Like you 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 can't you can't just have like one thing be the best uh like i mean that's why like when bdr came out like bdr itself was really an issue but at the same time it did promote attack to be played a little bit more Mm -hmm. um the real issue with dynamite battle wasn't the fact that it went stamina focused it was that they let's be real they botched the stadium Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. like if they just literally would if they literally just would have took the standard stadium and just like Made made, made it one third size bigger it would have been perfect, and then change the pockets to the DB pockets. That mm-hmm. would have been perfect. Yeah, that like yeah. that's literally all they needed to do, and they fumbled the ball on that. And I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I I get it. You know, companies try something, but they weren't about to be like, okay, we fumbled the ball on this stadium, um, so let's try make a new one. When they were like, bro, we're gonna be done this in at least two years anyway, and yeah. then have Beyblade yeah. X. Like they knew yeah. about X way before. Of course, you know, yeah. That like I think I think they yeah. said like they were developing X in like Chosey era. They started development. Oh, wow, <clears throat> that's yeah. a while. so long ago. <laughs> yeah, double I metal. Think, I would say I would no. I was saying what the state that stadium was solely for stamina. At least the way that I I saw it. So if I like like the same with X, if they did take out the gears, I could see that taking out a lot of the RNG. But I don't yeah. know if they'll. Something like that, because the st- the stadium, I guess that's something I've never really thought about. But that the stadium makes or breaks the game more so than the Beyblades or the Meta. Yeah. Um. As 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 I'm sitting back and think about it now, but yeah, 100. percent Yeah, it is good to have that balance. I think. Um. I don't. I I I personally don't feel like playing with attack would not be that fun. But I can get y'all's viewpoints, especially Geeser, because we've been playing so long and he has been playing attack. It's probably just because because it's newer to me, and I know that it was a, a lot harder to strategize with attack. I think with the rubber flats and to you know to be able to try to tornado stall or like what you said, watching your opponent because that's when the skill comes in. Like, hey, are they flat launching? Then let me use the ang- let me angle launch to see if I can burst them or launch in this other area. And those are avenues that I think we might have to go to if we wanted to keep it competitive. And nothing was happening with defense and stamina, but. Tom well, that's, will tell. that's why I said it was flip it's been flipped over. Like Blader skill is still more important than the combo right now because of situations mm-hmm. like that. You know, like f- figuring out how your opponent launches and you know adjusting that 
is going to be a very big thing in Beyblade X. And that's another reason why I think um, Takara Tomi's rule set is very specific. Like, this is the first time they've given us a priority stat, you know, as to what um, points are, like, what, what win conditions are high, higher valued. Um, Can you, what, 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 I know we talked about it, I forgot it. What is that, what is the priority again? Oh, yeah. So, okay, burst, a, a burst has the highest priority. If a Beyblade bursts, no matter what is going on with the other Beyblade, the, the Beyblade that bursts lost. Okay. Because no matter what, just like how we have said in the WBO, it is declared as if that burst has happened even a fraction of a second before the other thing could happen. Yeah, because it would have had to have burst. It can't burst if the other baby was already KO'd. Right, exactly. Actually, um, about that rule, I've always been confused. Like, what happens if, like, we do get, like, a burst, but it's, like, from hitting the wall instead? Like, the inside wall, not, like, one from, like, getting KO'd. I've seen that happen, too. And I've, um... I know what you're saying, because, like, it'll, uh, a Beyblade will hit, and then, like, it'll KO it, and the other Beyblade is fine, and I'll watch it mm-hmm. on slow-mo, but as soon as it hits the wall, yeah. that's what burst. I still count those as a burst, because okay. technically it just did, it, the only reason why I hit that wall at the rate of speed that it did was because the other Beyblade pretty okay. much hit that out of it. So. Okay, so for, for X, here here's how that will work. So, say... Your Beyblade hits mine into the pocket and in the recoil goes back and hits the wall and bursts, right? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. so I am currently spinning in this pocket. If I stop in that pocket, it is a KO for you. If I bounce out of that pocket, it is a burst for me. What? Wait, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I feel like you told me this before. I thought burst had priority, though. You okay, but... Okay, okay, okay. So in that specific scenario, because the burst did not happen until after I was already in the pocket, because I hit the wall, because it hit the wall. Do you understand oh, what I'm saying? Okay, so it's taken out from what I just said. It's, it's explaining it to be like, okay, okay, right, right. Dang. So so that's why like that's why like if, if if that exact scenario happens, if like my Beyblade hits yours, you fly into the pocket, and mine recoils back and goes into the wall. And then bursts after you've already been into the pocket. It it will then determine what what determines who wins is what happens with your Beyblade next. If your Beyblade stays in that pocket and doesn't come out and ends up stopping spinning in that pocket, then I I, I win with the KO. Mm-hmm. But if you just happen to bounce out, you will win with the burst. Dang. I think this uh oh. this applies. I think Shindog was the one who said it before i can't quite remember but it's basically applying like a sort of win zone like kind of yeah. situation so mm-hmm. therefore if you're in the pocket you cannot win right but if you yeah. bounce out of the pocket yes. you're back in play and mm-hmm. you can win exactly that's yeah. um that's a big uh rng factor though yeah so like- i feel like it's like yes but at the same time with the way the pockets are designed they're intending for you to stay in the pocket and your chance of yeah. coming out is like near not near zero but it's like very low yeah, mo- yeah most most of the time with the way these pockets are designed if you get down into that pocket you're staying in like if you if you hit the wall over top of the pocket and bounce back in that does happen mm-hmm. but if you if you like go over the little lip that they have for either of the ones and that's it you, you're you're in most of the time like, yeah. I think I've only seen one that actually goes down into the pocket, bounce out, like, once. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a very rare thing to happen. But if it does, they have a priority system out there. Like, if your Beyblade goes into the pocket, James, and I'm still spinning, but I'm really low on stamina, if, mm-hmm. I, if I stop spinning while you're in the pocket, it depends, once again, what happens with your Beyblade. If you pop back in, it's a spin finish for you. If you stay out... It's a KO for me, even though my Beyblade stopped spinning before yours. Oh, okay. So you, 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 the whole time you have to wait for the Beyblade to be completely both Beyblades to end on their own. Yes, like so. Yeah. So like, if one goes into the pocket and you're just like, oh, I went into the pocket, and you reach in and grab it, you just, you, 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 you just, you pretty much just screwed yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You, you, you. So yeah. Oh, that it's it's kind of weird. Um. Not to cut you off, but I, I wanted to get this out. It's kind of weird because uh, when we played three v three, I had some instances. Uh, it was it was one match where someone reached in and grabbed their Beyblade before it was done because it was just kind of dying. You know, it was the LED, but I was like, 
I um I didn't yell at the kid, but I uh <laughs> it was it was a mistake because they reached Yeah, I know. I, I know I know what you mean. I, yeah, because he was on drift. He was on opposite spin drift. And mm -hmm. I was like, dude, you know, I I watched my language. I'll be like, you just you just screwed yourself. Because yeah, you you look like you were slowing down and dying, but you had drift, but he didn't understand that. And I was like, if you would have let oh, yourself no. uh, you would have just let it rot out. The other Beyblade would have slowed down and you would have kept spinning. But I was like, you just like right now you've lost because you reached in there. So we already have that rule in the WBO. I think to it's like, you know, you wait for the judge to tell you to get your Beyblade and that's when it should yeah. be. Another thing I noticed with um the 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 burst and the KOs. Um so the KOs are KOs and burst the same amount of points. Yep, they are okay. Oh, okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I know the four there's a four the four points, but so there's there's two different types of KOs now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There, there's an over finish and there's an extreme finish. Extreme finishes mm -hmm. are worth three, over finishes are worth two. Okay. And bursts um, are worth two, right? Bursts are worth two. Um and then uh spin finishes are worth one. Okay. And the reason why I was saying, because I know, like, one thing in the WBO that we have that I usually forget to explain to parents, and they're like, well, my kid bursts, this and that. I was like, well, this is a pocket burst, so it really doesn't count as a burst. And they're like, well, whatever, you know. But mm -hmm. um, actually, I don't run into a lot of issues with that, but I will have to explain it. But I did enjoy having the KO finish as two points, because it didn't matter. I didn't have to see if, like, oh, did it burst in the pocket or not, regardless, mm -hmm. it's two points. So if it's two points for the burst and 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 um, two points for the KO, then it's solid. I don't yep. think anyone is going to be like, well, I got a burst and a KO with an extreme finish. Is that five points? I hope nobody's like that. But it clarifies well, a little bit. Huh? I don't think, um, I don't, like, if it is an extreme finish, then that's just it. So yeah, yeah, there's no chance yeah, of. That was the only thing. There's I no chance see. of the big getting back in. Yeah, but if it's, I was thinking about like, well, what if it bursts inside of one of those pockets? Am I giving them the burst points or the KO points? But at the end of the day, they're the same amount of points, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. This is probably a stretch of a question, but if I burst, I stay inside, you go into the pocket and you're in the pocket, you come in. If you go back out, that doesn't matter. As long as you come back in, you've won, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. That makes sense. I know yeah, how to play. Uh, quite yeah, a few scenarios. <laughs> yeah, uh, like like I said, it's just it's just really nice that Takara Tomi actually told us these, mm -hmm. and then of course, and then of course we have the whole going out of the um opening of the oh, stadium, yeah. the launch area. Um, from what I understand, oh, yeah. there's a lot of debate about that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, not, or just not, in general. Not from Takara Tomi, but in the WBO. Um, yeah. What what is what is the consensus on it? Okay. Well, what, what first off, let me know what Takara Tomi is saying. Are they okay. saying anything? Okay, so here's Takara Tomi's rules. So if if we launch our Beyblades into the stadium, right? And mm -hmm. Some at some point in time, one gets thrown out of the top opening of the stadium, right? Mm -hmm. It's considered a draw, and you oh. redo you redo the match. Okay. It's, it's considered going out of bounds, and you okay. redo the amount. The Wait, match. in this is this in the case that it doesn't come back in, or just regardless? No, I'll, it's it's I'll, going out of the top opening of the yeah, stadium, it, so it can't come back in. It can't come back. In. Oh, I mean, yeah. I thought we've had videos where it comes like out and then falls in, like it just jumps straight up. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, no, we're we're talking like when it flies out of the top of the stadium, like it, okay. like if if it, if it just bounced up and then came back down, that that's nothing. But if it okay, actually, it. if it actually like, because it, it the, you're the, talking it, about like hitting ground like outside of the stadium, right? Yeah, yeah I'll right. Go Arma, okay, yeah. Arma has like anime Beyblades that we're coming out, <laughs> <laughs> running down the sidewalk and be like, oh, John Sword, get back in there. And it's, Coming through the top of the stadium to get back. Yeah, uh, the only reason I'm asking is there's a one famous clip that was uh going around like right when X came out where like I think one of the bases got thrown like so high up towards the camera but it came back in like without hitting anything outside. That's why. Oh yeah, I remember that. That would that be was... that, 
that's dope, honestly. I would love to see that at a um at a at a tournament. Yeah, you you might. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Very possible. Yeah, but um, so then of course we we get to my favorite topic, the WBO, um, <laughs> where people are arguing that if that happens, it should be a KO. So um, before before I state what. I what what why I think it's the way it is and why it should stay that way. I, I'll let you guys tell me what you guys feel. I guess mm-hmm. given the only info I have right now, I would probably agree with them. I'd have to hear your reasoning and then decide again. I think. Okay. What about I, you? I don't know. I mean, I initially I would think it's a knockout, but if yeah. there's a good reason for why it's then mm-hmm. I would accept it. Well, I'm gonna be the devil's advocate, and I'm I'm more like. If the car is Tommy said that it's a draw. That is true, yeah. <laughs> that's what Yeah, that's I, that's I, that's true too. Yeah, I I would look at it to be like the game and this is this is um I think my debate that I've have had with the WBO. Takar Tommy makes the game and they play it the way or they play it from the way that um they want it to be played. They make the rulings in the way they want it to be played. I see the stadium they have Two pockets for the KO, and um, or three pockets, but they have just the uh, normal KOs and then the extreme finish. Those are your three win conditions with KOs. They were not considering the top, or they weren't allowing you to have a KO from it going out of the top. You know, mm. and I feel like if we allowed that, then we have to implement another rule set as far as how many points we're going to do with that. And then you also have to think about people who are going to be intentionally playing or trying to get that for whatever reason. Um, I think it just adds another aspect to the game that we don't really need. And if they just said, like, hey, it's not a KO, it's a draw, just redo it, then that's just what it is. And, that, and more than likely, that's probably what they thought. It was like, dude, we don't have time. That's not what we intended this to be like. You know, um, it's a freak accident or whatever if it does happen occasionally but it's not something that it's not how the game is supposed to be played so we're not even going to worry about doing that um and i think if they took the time to even address it they're like hey we know it's there this is how y'all handle it play the way that we wanted you to play right so 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 in you you're you're pretty much where i'm at um so if you if you ever get a chance to look at the bx stadium you'll notice that the extreme zone has a little wall blocking it from mm-hmm. you being able to go into it whereas the regular over zones do not you can just hit them kind of well they they have like a little lip but that's it kind of like you know normal stadiums not a wall so in that in that aspect if if i'm hitting a beyblade out over something taller than that other wall, why would it not be an extreme finish? Why would it just be an over finish? You get what if I mean? You, wait, so, say, say that. Hold on, I, get, I need to if, slow down. If, if, if my Beyblade hits the other Beyblade out of the opening in the top, I have hit the Beyblade higher than the little the little wall for an extreme finish. So <laughs> why why would it not be considered an extreme finish? So, and that that that's basically like how how do you really point give a point to it plus not to mention they call they they give everything a name you have the over zone the extreme zone and then the play area or battle mm-hmm. zone is what it's called so when you're flying out of the lid and not ending the game in any of these zones how do you determine you know that that's a point i guess yeah. now that the ko zones are actually like located within the stadium as opposed to you know like mfb or even burst technically because the hole is still like exiting the stadium now that we have like designated areas like you do have to stay within those for them to count essentially yeah yeah Yeah, no after you've given your reasoning now i can kind of understand like why you're saying what you have right someone had asked me i actually literally earlier today i was asked by um someone what i felt about it and i told him in the bx stadium it, ha- it it should be a draw if it goes out of the top. Any other stadium in Beyblade, though, it's a KO to me. Yeah. Any yeah, other no, stadium. I would agree. Because yeah. it's essentially just another overzone at that point. Because it's essentially how the play area is defined in those other those stadiums. Exactly. 
Exactly. You have left the play area. Mm -hmm. This here has defined zones. Exactly. To go into. Yeah, because yeah. this is all this is also the first Takara Tomy stadium that actually has like in stadium pockets. Yeah. 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 So that yeah. that's that's the kind of stuff that and I, I you know I I, I, lo I love the WBO, mm -hmm. but I also hate the WBO. Like yep. I'll be a hundred percent honest. There are so many people there are so many people that don't think things through and just splurt out nonsense. And oh, yeah. <laughs> they just don't think about it. And it, it, it bothers me so much because I'm just like, if you would just take a step back and actually play the game for a little bit of time the way it's meant to be played, you'll probably understand more as to why it's designed that way. Yeah. But in, 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 instead, it's they hear one thing and instantly, no, I hate it. Rant, mm -hmm. rabble, 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 rabble. And I just, I don't like that. I don't like that people don't want to give something an actual chance. You know, like, yeah, play it the way Takara Tomy says to play. Like that—that's one of the reasons why I believe Takara Tomy says this is a three-on-three -three game. That's why they made a three-on-three -three box and came yeah. out with stuff to support three-on-three -three so early. There's a reason. Because yeah. if yeah. you get to a point where one Beyblade is overpowered, well, what do you do if you play one v one? Everyone's just going to play the same thing over and over again. Yep. And it's going to get boring. At least with three on three, you have to show your skill as a as a builder. You have to then show your skill at launching a Beyblade, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have to show your skills at where to arrange your order because that yeah. matters. Yeah, actually, about you know that uh, part. But does oh, the character yeah. me or like WBBA even do like one v one type stuff? Uh not anymore. Yeah, okay. no. I figured. Yeah. Oh, no, they, not anymore. So they did do them at one point. Yeah, yeah, they did like one v one stuff. I think in like Bakuten shoot and uh, huh. a little bit of metal fight. I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, I think I think three on three. I don't I don't know if they did anything in burst um with single bay. Um, they do do single bay with like the three match tournaments where it's like three bladers in that one stadium, but that's a whole different thing. You know, yeah. that's not that's not like regular Beyblade. You know, as um, this had me thinking or, or taking it back to our conversation on if this game is just for attack or just for stamina. Because one thing, so we had a we had someone else win. Because um, typically at our tournaments, Firebladers even went in or hashtag Fafnir as well. Um, and you have to, you know, you're using your strategy and you're balancing everything out. We had a new winner um, this time. Uh, shout out, I, I can't really say his name i think it's txz or, um it's a different name but I've, I've noticed from 3v3 you do have those more options you still have to know your beyblade um but it's not as determined you know when you're running single bay and you're like hey i have this matchup so when you're talking about like using 3v3 for the uh the x stadium and everything like that like when you gave me the advice so everyone is not running dran sword Mm -hmm. Um, and I can even think like in the future, like even if it was just attack, everyone's not going to be running the same three attackers. And can you use your attacker if you're running Dransor? Can it beat my what's the one you said, Shark? The Shark, shark Edge? Oh, yeah, Shark yeah. Edge. Shark shark edge. edge. Can it beat my Shark Edge? Um, yes or no, you know, and then there will be times when we'll reveal that Beyblade Descendant, and it's like, dang man, he's got Shark Edge, I got Dransor, I always lose to this, and to have that feeling is, um. It's good from what they're going, what you're going against, or you do pull out the defense type um, against another defense type or something like that. And so I won't, I get, I think I will say right now, uh, cause I know I keep trying to preach or hope, hoping <laughs> that, that things are going to be for the best and it's not all luck, but I'm thinking um, just for right now, I think it's, it was possibly not to be designed as far as the heavy strategy that we may have seen in the past. But it is designed to have some strategy in it. Uh, and that strategy, like you said, it may come from um, um, like the, like the uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. Strategy may just be in the format, just in 3v3, and you having your attack from you trying to get the finishes the way that you can get them. There will be some um, luck in there, but you just need to, I don't know, get your 3v3 combos lined up correctly. Uh, whatever the meta is going to be, it may be all attack. I don't know. Um, and what you're going up against, where to launch and things like that. But 
I am kind of, I guess from just listening to y'all, I'm kind of looking forward to it. And I like that mm-hmm. Takara Tony laid everything out. They're not like, hey, it's a free-for-all. I'm like, no, this is the way the game needs to be played. This is what we have designed. These are the only ways you can win. And I like that. I do. Yeah, I, I will say um, through us playing with X, uh, especially on Sunday, I definitely, I definitely never felt behind. Like, even if someone got an extreme finish on me, Mm-hmm. And you know, like like the first round, or like if I if I had got one point by an outspin, and then on the next one they got an extreme finish, I never actually felt like I was behind to where I would lose the game. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, ne- I never felt that way because it was always like, okay, well, I just need to get a KO or a burst, and I'm I'm right back there at, with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and like if I get two KOs in a row, then I win. If I get yeah. a KO and a burst in a row, I win. Like, yeah. there's all of this stuff that, like, you, you, it's not like the meta's not like certainly like defined to where you're like, okay, well, this is always going to end in an outspin, or all we're having are outspins, or all we're having are extreme finishes. You know, yeah. it's, it's very, it's very randomized. Like, you can you can put two two Beyblades in there with the ball tip. And if just a small amount of recoil happens, one gets KO'd. Yeah. Or you launch just a little too hard and you catch that ridge and you just self-extreme finish. Like, mm-hmm. all of that can happen. So all it takes is one mistake from you as a blader, and it could, it, it could, it could end in an instant. Yeah. I think, man, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm talking to you because I'm actually, like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm more, way more excited than I was before. And I think a bigger factor, too, is that I just played 3v3. And that format, um, it the formats r- really matter. They really matter on the strategy and the way you're playing the game. And what you said about the points was a big thing because they had, I think, finals was three to four. And typically, you know, we're playing the way that we play with one, one point KO, one point outspin, two points burst. The person with three points really doesn't have a real... Uh, uh, as much of a chance of of coming um, back to get the, um, to five points before their opponent when we're playing deck, but when it was three v three, it was three and four. Anybody could have won that. Mm-hmm. Whether the 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 player with three points did somehow get a burst, or they were able to get a KO um, at that point, and of course, the other player only needed one more point. But anybody could have won that, and I like that factor and that adrenaline rush. And I think with us playing three v three. And kind of like not being forced, but really playing the game. I don't know. My biggest takeaway, I think, from this conversation is to play the game Takara Tomi made, yep. made, play it the way Takara Tomi made it. And then um, if we're playing like that, I think a lot of the worry and the factors that we're having, we'll see that they are, I don't I can't think of the right word. They don't need to be there, pretty much. Um, I think things will, will possibly be okay if we just play the game the way it was meant to be played. We caused our own struggles and our own drama from thinking that there's going to be issues, like you said, Mike, with people just being like, oh, I hate this and I hate that because it's change or whatever. But really, it's like, dude, just play the way it's supposed to be played. You'll have fun. Trust me. Well, one of the, one of the biggest problems we have is, you know, once, once people get set in their ways of, you know, whatever era of Beyblade we're in, they don't they don't want to change like when burst came out people from metal flight didn't want to didn't want to play burst because you know you now had this shroud over the stadium and bursts were happening all the time and if the baby you know eventually you got to the point where the baby were bigger and it's like oh well if they don't go out of the stadium if they hit the back like the, the shroud is stopping it from going out of the stadium when in a bb10 this would be a ko <laughs> You're not playing in a BB. Yeah, that was. No, you, you, you are playing in the first standard stadium. Yeah, yeah. What were you like, saying, Beta Blake? Oh, oh, my bad, Mike. If I cut no, you off. you're good. You're good. You're good. Go oh no, I was just saying because I remember a lot of MFB players uh, not being fond of Burst like, Flight, and mm-hmm. it was ongoing. I think even like maybe not as recently, but like past Chosey and GT, like it was just still a lot of. Them animosity towards birds like it's crazy so yeah. hopefully it's not as big here you know people just 
um, you know, accept X for its differences. Well, that's, sort of that's the whole thing. Like, people have to realize that all of these different generations of Beyblade, they're the, the, at core, they are Beyblade, but mm-hmm. they are different mm-hmm. games completely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why yeah. it is called Bakuten Shoot. Metal yeah. Fight, Burst, X. Mm-hmm. There's a yeah. reason for all of it. And, and it's called that because the game has changed. It's yep. got new rules. Follow yeah. the new rules. Yeah. I feel that's running into X expecting it, like the metagame, to be same as Burst. Or like, like yeah. the same like kind of, a, what do you call it, like logic right. applied to any other transfer. Right. And, th- and that, that's is the wrong. issue. You know, we're we're expecting it to be the same as Burst, and it's it's not going to be the same as Burst. Well, okay, there's a lot of people expecting it to be the same as Metal Fight because they think, mm-hmm. oh, you know, it's got <laughs> metal contact points, height differences, you know, oh, this is just Metal Fight, you know, with a extreme gimmick and the ability to burst, but yeah. it's it's not. It's Beyblade X. Yeah. And, as know. um. Yeah, thinking more on it now is it's like what you said, a lot of things are reverse. Like if I had to do the three v three, like typically in burst and stuff like that, I would have you want to run a little bit like double stamina, maybe one attacker, or maybe all three stamina, because that's just the way the game was. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Versus like now, I can have my two attackers and hope I don't have that mirror matchup or whatever to where I'm having a chance that maybe one of my attackers outperforms the other one and they have theirs in a different spot. And then just the fence in there, just in case like things go south. And those are things that you got to think about. But we can only play that way if we're playing the way that it was intended to be played. You I mean, know, the, I, the, yeah. The thing, the thing is though, is like with X, even if you, say say you're a stamina player, okay? Say you like playing stamina, so you mm-hmm. use you're gonna use ball, and then you use like wide needle or whatever if it ever comes out, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You're using you're using those kind of tips because you just try to play it safe with stamina. Well, at the same time, as a blader, if you realize, crap, they have a combo that's really hard for me to beat stamina-wise, like it's a stamina mirror match. So it's Uh like, what do you do? Well, I could change my launch style and try to use the X-dash gimmick to try to KO them and get a point that way. Yeah, you have uh, other alternatives to win. Right, like like all of the Beyblade, basically now it's almost like the Beyblades are all balance types. You can yeah. get them to do yep. everything, which is pretty cool. I, I, I give that that. That's, that's pretty cool. You know, mm-hmm. it's just currently, currently it's hard to see it in a competitive light because of the, like, the very small amount of parts we have. And I think that's one of the issues that we have uh, when Burst started. They had very few parts. You know, there was only, like, one combo that was really good and ran the format because of the way teeth were and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And we're going to ha- we're gonna have the same issue with X at the start. You yeah. know, it, the parts are so limited. Luckily, Takara Tomi, on the other hand, though, this time around, they're launching a lot of stuff right after the other. Like, by, yeah. the, end of, by the end of, like, the year, we're supposed to be at, like, BX20-something. Yeah. So, like, I mean, yeah. that's... That's plenty of different stuff, and they can come out with a lot of different things. Oh, yeah. 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 They're going to kick out. They're, they've already kicked out a lot of product. More product is going to come. And um, I completely lost my train of thought. Armor, were you about to say something? I no, 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 I was not. Yeah. Um, they're kicking out a lot of product. A lot of product is going to come. I think as we shoot... You said something before, Mike. Um, dang, I don't know where my head goes sometimes. I was thinking about it was something with 3v3 and builds. I can't remember. Dang, I hate when that happens. Um, shoot. All right. I lost it. I guess it wasn't that important, but <laughs> Phil was odd. Mike, you said, you said, we have a lot of parts coming out. And what were you saying was the issue with Takara Tomi? Did you say there was an issue with it? No, no, no. I was saying the issue with Beyblade Burst when it first came out and probably like some of the reasons why so many people didn't like it is because they got so used to how Metal Fight was. You know, mm-hmm. Metal Fight Metal Fight got the same way. Oh, Metal- I remember. Yeah, there you go. Go ahead. Yeah, I remember. All right, so when you had brought up the fact of 
us having a variation to win the game. Um, with the if if you can engage the gear for it to KO your opponent, mm-hmm. and if you think about it, I know this has happened in tons of tournaments. Even Alan Schaefer has said it when he played. When you start losing that stamina matchup, whether you're playing deck or one v one or whatever, and you know your Beyblade isn't winning, you tend to yeet the hell out of it. Um, you jerk it off your launcher. Just hope you're hoping for a KO at that point. But there's no real factors for you to get your KO if you have a stamina Beyblade. Like you're just hoping that either your opponent messed up or that you can jerk yours enough to somehow magically get that KO with a wind or a dynamite or a vanish type combo, even though you you know you're typically losing. But that factor is kind of gone now with X. Um, yeah. I guess that's a that's an upside because if you can, it's like shoot. I know I'm not winning this matchup and stamina. I know I'm not winning this matchup and defense. I have to try to KO this dude. And yes, I do risk self KOing myself, but that's still the same factor that's in burst. When you're playing with rubber fights, or even when you're hard launching, you can KO yourself. The mm-hmm. difference in that, though is that I do have a chance to hit that bridge and to KO uh, my opponent. As long as I'm strategizing, I feel like the knowledge. Yeah, it is what you said. There are some. I don't. I think in time, I think the luck may go away a little bit more, and that and the player knowledge will surpass it. I think it'll go player knowledge, luck, and then um, what's your um, what's your call the 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 build because the combo. I yeah yeah the combo because I think if like if you're building your three v three deck if you're understanding the matchup that you have and it's like man i'm i really don't have a chance trying to win for stamina or defense i have to attack or i it's iffy 50 50 if i try to attack i need to try to get somewhere to where i can um try to defend i think that will come um but like you said there's it's it's brand new it's been out for like a month now with us not even not even a month not not even a month yeah not even a month so it's like i think it i think it will come like yeah no i i think I think currently, like I said, we. I think right now it's a luck factor, then blader skill, then combo. Mm-hmm. I think eventually it's going to go to blader skill, combo, luck. Yeah. I, I, I think. Was, ev- I think eventually it will get. To, yeah, that is exactly what we want to see. We want it to be yeah. blader yeah. skill, combo, luck. Like that's the mm-hmm. perfect tier for it to be. Yes. And I think. Ev- I think X has the potential to actually get there. Just for the simple fact of the way it's done, um, launching styles do make a difference. It's just we need more parts. And yeah. I think I think people have to realize that we need more parts to come out, so we just need to be patient. I mean, yeah. I don't think people need to bash on X right now, and I think, I think that's going to end up being an issue. There's going to be a lot of people bashing it. Um, mm-hmm. like, like, right now, like, it's definitely, it's definitely the most fun Beyblading um series out there but yeah. it's just as a competitive beyblader you get a little disheartened when like you're seeing stuff like randomly ko you and you're kind of like god i you know i can control this so it it, it triggers you yeah but at the same I, point in t- at the same point in time right now this is your lack of skill in the game the game is completely <laughs> different you need a whole new skill set yeah you're taking your baby steps right now to get you'll be walking and running soon you have to remake your D and D character here. Yeah, yeah, you're starting, you're starting over from scratch, and that that is such a um a big fact that I think it's going to take time. I've I've learned this. It's social media. It's not just WBO. People are always going to have their opinion, but I know you know this, yeah. Mike, in and um you will see it, Beta Blade, if you, if you haven't already. There's a lot of people on social media or like on the Discord or on the forums that are having their opinions. But when I go to these tournaments, these kids' face still lights up. The dad's face is still light up. Everyone is still having fun. They're not on Discord um, complaining and arguing. They're actually out there playing. So mm-hmm. even if, like, 90% of, well, 90% of a thread is just argument. It, arguing. It tends to be, like, a small number or group of people. And everyone that just want to play and actually get out there and have fun are just quiet. They're not caught up in the drama. So mm-hmm. it, it's not like even if on WBO, if everyone is like, I hate X, it sucks, this and that. Like, if you see that, if you're just logging on online and trying to get into Beyblade, like, I would still recommend you go to a tournament because everyone on the thread might be voicing their opinion. Um, but 
when you go to a tournament, you can see like, oh man, this is actually like a lot of fun. And probably six months from now, you'll be like, dude, there's a lot of skill involved. Like the RNG is there, but let's be real. RNG is always going to be there with Beyblades. It's just is what it is. But mm-hmm. I think um, like what you said, yeah, the, the, the blader skill and that, that is that is the perfect thing what we want like that like blader skill should be number one and then building the combo and then the rng and it will yeah we gotta i guess just trust the process and we'll get there yeah man this was a good conversation oh yeah I, I, <laughs> yeah I, very well said <laughs> yeah I'm yeah. glad that X is finally in our hands. Like that's the worst part. For like yeah. the past like six it months, ends. it's just, yeah, oh. yeah. For the past six months, it's all been speculation on yep. everything. Yeah. Like I will say one thing. I was extremely shocked when I opened it up and saw the rat, the size of the ratchet. Uh, was was oh. anybody else like, like I I I remember like seeing the comparison videos and whatnot of how small they were. But mm-hmm. it ne- like because you're seeing stuff on camera and you're seeing it on a screen, it just looks bigger than it is. Yeah. So then, like when you yeah. finally get it and you're like, oh, Yeah, no, once my. I was actually holding it, it felt tiny. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. oh my god, this is small. big. Are they? they? Are they real tiny? Yes. Yep. Yeah, they, they are, are really tiny. Okay. All right. I'm looking for. Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm more than likely gonna order mine. Yeah, tonight. I'm gonna do my. It's kind of fun, you know. I'll be be searching websites, comparing prices, seeing who can get me the the best deals. Yeah, it's kind of fun right now. So, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be doing a little bit of gaming and 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 looking up some stuff tonight to be able to get and um, yeah, we'll go from there. And then next month, we'll play and we'll have fun. And what when do you, they have a release date or like is it the middle of? Actually, I still have the spreadsheet. I could probably look, but what? is it the middle of um for the random boosters? Is it the middle of September or early September? I don't know on the day I, for the random booster. I think it's the middle, but I'm not too sure. Okay, okay. Oh, since we're here, James, I wanted to ask you because you know we you did bring up the store a little bit. I remember Challenger was happening at this convention with you being a store. Is that still able to happen, even though you won't ha- have a booth there? Or so I don't, I don't know because when I um right now I uh or on on the last episode, and then I also talked to the community. Like I'm taking everything day by day, step by step. Right now, I'm not um I cannot commit to Challenger for one. Like we were doing the prizes, and that like. All the extra funds with the store were going into tournaments. We're going into tournaments or going back to the community with prizes and things like that. Um, some of it was even coming out of um, my own personal funds because I just wanted to help. But right now, um, the only prizes that I had sent, I sent some up for Beyblade East. Um, and I cannot really, I don't want to say. That, you can't like, commit I to probably, it. Yeah, I can't, I can't commit to it right now. And okay. also, like, as I talked to my wife, um, even though everything that happened, it was heavy. But the beauty of it was, it's like, hey, I kind of get back. Because Beyblade had kind of, like, with the store, it 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 turned into more of a business. And that's not a bad thing, you know, because I was able to help the community. But it's also, like, I was an, I'm a nerd first, you know, like this is what got me into it. Like, the TCGs and, and just the gaming and the competition, like, that is where my primary focus is. So initially I was like, well, we could still, I could still try to run Challenger um, at the convention and things. But as I talked to my wife and just sitting down, I kind of want to go to the convention to enjoy the convention because right. the last couple of months, I mean, the last couple of years, when I first started going, I was going around the booths, watching the anime. I mean, watching the cosplay contest, gaming, spending time with my kids and this and that. But lately and it's not it's not bad it was it was still fun you know getting spreading the word of beyblade and going to um there and having the vendor booth and talking to people um growing the store some growing competitive beyblade um but i kind of want i think this year i want to take a break um with everything that happened and just go there enjoy my nerd life um if bwc has happens again 
I will host the regionals, but it's more than likely not going to be at the con- uh, at the convention because I want to enjoy the convention. I, yeah, I want to enjoy the convention. Mm-hmm. I want to enjoy my nerd life um, again, and that's even a thing with the tournaments. Like I know we're not supposed to have stores at the tournaments, but mm-hmm. um, there's been times where I like I talked to my I'm like I'm not bringing we're not bringing Beyblades because sometimes it'll get too hectic and people are um, trying to buy things, which is good. I probably sound like negative. But it's like, hey man, I I want to play. Like, like let's play. You know, <laughs> like you call somebody up, and they're like, they're 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 at the store, like trying to buy something. And it's like, all right. But now I don't. We come and we play. We enjoy each other's company, and then we go from there. And that's what I'm hype on right now. So no, mm-hmm. um, I guess to to sum it up, my I, right now I'm not focused on challenger. I'm focused on taking it step by step, day by day, and, and playing. Um, no, that, that's fair. I I, I was asking fair. mostly so that way then. I knew what to possibly prepare for for next year. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Oh yeah, yeah. And you, y'all got y'all's thing. I, I, um, as long as I'm able to travel up there, uh, I do want to be a part of that because I do like the communities and, and what you, they have going on. Do you want me to say what it is and explain it? Because I'm more than happy to. Yeah, a hundred percent. I shoot, mm-hmm. I forgot because we had our last episode, but it got lost, and you talked about it up there. But yeah, go ahead and. Let's hear about it. All right. So, oh, actually, it's it's had a bit of a renaming. So, um, okay. here, here, hold on, here, hold on, hold on, one second before you start. Armor and uh, Bay the Blade. We usually do these for like two hours. I know we're going over a little bit more. Oh, I'm really good <laughs> because I'm talking about Bay Blade. All the store drama is like kind of behind us. Um, and I just want to enjoy the nerd life. But if y'all had to hop off, like y'all are good. But if not, y'all are more than welcome to stay and talk. Okay. I'm chilling yeah. for now. We're good here. Probably yeah, just not going to hang I'm around fine. too much longer, but uh, we're good. Yeah. We, we, right. we, we bing chilling here. <laughs> 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 all right. All right. So here in Maryland, um, we're going to start something. It's going to be called the DMV Grand Prix, where what this is, is uh, DMV is like an abbreviation for Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. That's just what we kind of mi- mostly call the Central Atlantic. And uh-huh. it just kind of rhymed well with Grand Prix, so that's why I went with it. Uh, so anyway, it's gonna it's gonna be a it's gonna be a series of tournaments. Um, we're gonna have every other month will be a qualifying tournament, where you know the top depending on the amount of players per tournament, the top anywhere between um, four and eight will get an invite to a championship at the. Uh, start at next year because it, it'll go it'll go on for a full year and uh-huh. the you know the i'm i'm planning to try to start it in october so then it'd be the october of the following year would be the championship and what it's going to do is every tournament's going to have the same strict set of rules where basically we're playing all all before you know before rules just maybe with a little bit of modifications to allow it to be ranked with wbo like uh one thing uh rank clauses that you know uh, i there's only one rank clause that i know for x that i'm gonna have in there which is going to be i don't want people using the custom painted um beyblades because they would not be allowed in takara tomi's events i'm not gonna have them in these either yeah. um, but but the go- the goal of this is to see who is you know consistently doing good in maryland or like the dmv area in the central atlantic strictly under the b4 rule guide the b4 oh. set of rules yeah so and these are the players that if they consistently do good and if takara tomi comes over and decides they're going to start hosting tournaments or regionals or anything these are the players you will see going into these events and doing well yeah and that's yeah. That, that's the whole point of this and the reason why i want to turn this into a series is because by the f- championship tournament, not only are we going to crown a champion, but you'll also see the people that are consistently doing well. Because mm-hmm. you'll see in each tournament, oh, hey, you know, Crisis Crusher won one, and then he stayed within, like, the top three all year long. That that shows a consistency. Whereas mm-hmm. you could have, you know, Alan Schaefer, he, he won one, but then he was never in top three again. So he yeah. may have gotten his invite, but he wasn't showing consistency. But then say his luck turns around at the championship and he wins the whole championship as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, cool, luck was on his side. 
you acknowledge that he is crowned the champion of the tournament, but you also get to acknowledge that he isn't a consistent top player. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that that's that's the focus of this. I I, I kind of want to separate how how ranking on WBO is done, where ranking is just you know someone can just flood points, and just because they have a lot of points, they think they're good. I was the highest ranked person at BWC, and I was out round two. <laughs> I was out round two. I'm garbage, okay? <laughs> no, like, you're not garbage. Those <laughs> things happen sometimes, but yeah. No, you're yeah. right. You're right. They do, but it, but that's that's the point. Okay, you you can you can look at my track record and see that I consistently did well in Maryland tournaments here. You know, okay, I'm a consistently topping player. I ran into some bad luck and maybe made some poor decisions at BWC. It was a very tense and you know overwhelming tournament. You've got a bunch of people there that you don't know yeah, yeah but that's that's what i want i i, I want to open the gate for wbo mm. to see that maybe this route is the better route than having the ranking system because the ranking system is always breaking the website yeah it it i i agree um i love your i love your idea and we talked about it um offline but it's like the I think every region needs to have something like that. Even if they're not like, like right now, I know I'm not doing challenger, but still the consistent hosting of tournaments to where there is like some type of format consistency or some type of play style consistency, whether it's monthly, um, every other month or whatever that you can do to get your community together. Yeah. You could still see who was doing the best. And then like we have for BWC or if, WBO wanted to get something together to have that big tournament where everyone comes together and it doesn't have to be an invitation it could be just like BWC but you'll know just like Armor when he went down there he even though he had he never played with the people that he played against he knew these guys um from you know being top cut or just their names being spoken about from Broyedo, Zector, Sniper, Crisis you know and to come together and to see these people from different regions and to be like not only are you representing yourself to be like, hey, I won all of this. You're also saying, like, my region is better than yours, you know? And <laughs> I mean, that's really what it is. And I think I think that's pretty dope. No, it's trash talking, but I felt yeah. proud. I know Maryland overall won um, uh, uh, King is King of the Hill. Yeah. But my guys from North Carolina, they, they, they came in second. So I know, like, I feel very confident in our region and when we're playing together and like that. And um. Uh, that is, that is a, that is a big factor. And then you, you know, you hone your skills at home, um, with your locals, with your regionals. And then if you have something big and yeah, I agree. I think that, that drastically, drastically outweighs the rank, especially like, I mean, and it even shows WB because I know one thing they were worried about, like getting rid of the rank and people still look at the rank. BWC was completely unranked. Tournaments are still going on. If not like growing even more right now. And the ranking system hasn't been updated for like three or four months. So well, it's broken. It's broken right now. Yeah, it's broken. So it's so. like, it's, and we're still here. We're still here. We're still playing, still enjoying the game. If anything, even more hype. I know I'm more hype right now. Um, yeah, I'm and, ready to get the, and the XM. Yeah. E e even though these are, you know, like a, a big thing for the Central Atlantic, anybody can come play. I don't care where you're from. If you want to come play Beyblade, come play Beyblade. Yeah, I want you know, to there's only going to be one tournament that will just be invite based, and that's going to be the championship. And that's only, that's only because like I want the people that earned it to be the people here. Because yes. yeah, I'm because I'm going to be given extra prizing for the people that actually you know win that event. I don't want Joe Schmidt that just now decided to come play for the first one and come yeah. and win it when these guys worked hard all year to be here. Do you have to do you have to win a certain amount to get to how do you get your invitation from just winning one or it's from Okay so you you, you get your invite it'll be based on how many players there are at the tournament like I'm unfortunately right now like I'm having most of them at Superstar Card Gaming so I kind of have to max out at like 36 participants Okay which which you know I mean like for Maryland that's that's like a middle number. Like we get that. So sometimes we get more than that. Sometimes we get a, l a little less, but that's like the average number we'll get. And I also like 36 because it allows us to have six rounds. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I I try to have it to where we'll have as many rounds as possible, and that that allows more factors for people to be better at the game and hone in their skills. So depending on the amount of players that show up at each one, will depend on how many invites I give out. But it's going to either go from four to eight, um, based on how many players we have. So yeah. either all of top eight will get it, or all of top four, or you know however it goes. And I will do a pass down system. So like if. Uh... So if, you know, if I'm winning every single one and I've got my invite from the first one, yeah. you know, if, you know, Armor, if you showed up and, you know, you, you got fifth place and it was, on, and it was only going to top four, mm -hmm. it passes down to you. You would get oh, it. That'd be cool. Yeah. So, you know, because by the end of the day, like, I, wa I want the championship tournament to have more than just the same eight people, because that would just be boring. Yeah. Like, if it got to a point where, you know, the same eight people have figured out the game and they're just always winning, well, then the championship's just going to be eight people and we're going to play some round robin and that's going to be it. <laughs> it is fair to expect that, like, you know, there will be consistently people who are getting top, so you do have to account for that. Right. Exactly. So, you know, like, and... Sometimes it could be a f simple, fa especially with X, with how random it is too. Mm -hmm. At least right now, like I don't want someone that is consistently doing well at the tournament, mm -hmm. but then just randomly the last round they just get randomly recoiled into the extreme zone and lose. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's gonna feel really bad when you're like, man, I had this. Like I, it was already three, three to one, and they just happened to randomly recoil me, and I was just in the wrong spot. Like that's gonna yeah. suck. Yeah. But at least like if someone ahead of you had your invite, you you will get it. And the way um one of the main ways why where I'm probably going to do it is so when you do challenge when you get in the top when you get in the top 4 like after um the when you play top 8, the four people that lost, they're all just considered fifth place. Yeah. yeah. So in order to counterbalance as to who would be get that pass down invite it's going to go based off of your seeding from the swiss rounds just because okay. if this guy went undefeated in the first stage but then mm -hmm. lost you know his first round of top cut he deserves it more than the other guys anyway yep. yeah he went undefeated you know through the entire swiss event mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's how i'm going to base that um yeah. i just i want to make it as fair as possible and i want to make it as competitive as possible Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, I can't remember if I asked this before. I just thought about it. Are you going to be, do you think the deck is efficient to play with X? I do not. Um, okay. at, le at, least, right at least as of right now, it's not. Mm -hmm. um, maybe. Was... What's that? Yeah, I was thinking about that because uh, another thing I know I keep bringing up the 3v3. I'm, I'm just super hype on it after running it. It's like, there is strategy and skill with it, like I said. Like, if you are doing good, because your combos are, are decent and you know how to use it. And I can see that coming around if I do see it with X. And if the entirety of the tournament, because when you said if, I think if the per, if people are making it to top eight, I think you will see more consistency of the top four, even so, because you don't have that. Nothing is changing. You know, the, 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 the whole thing I know you used to say, Geese used to say, it, you don't get the top. You're not playing a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament and get the top cut play Pokemon, um, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. If um, and I love deck. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. But I think with and you can do whatever you want in the future. We don't know what's gonna happen. Um, yeah. but it, three the whole thing through, you really get to see that skill. That's why, like, I think if somebody goes undefeated through the first stage, um. I think that they, they they may just end up winning the whole thing just because their deck is on point. Right. Um, yeah. And so. and that and that's the thing too. Like right right now at least guaranteed. Like you don't have like this tip guaranteed beats this tip. This combo guaranteed beats this combo. You don't have anything like that. So trying to do deck format like really doesn't work because you can't counter pick anything really. Uh -huh. So like. And then the random factors of the extreme finishes and stuff just doesn't really allow deck deck format to work. So you're yeah. kind of just best off still doing three on three right now. Maybe in the future when they've come out with more parts and things mm -hmm. change a little bit, then I could probably see deck becoming the best format again. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. deck relies on like a more diverse metagame where you can actually have counters to everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
first standard deck format was definitely mm-hmm. like a really big format. It was, like, yeah. It I mean, really... unless you're unless you're Geeser ninety nine, you just win everything with win <laughs> on BDR. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I gotta I gotta yell at Dragreus for that because he never switched to his world combo, and he should have. Uh... Never once did he switch to it. Thanks. So. Mm. Um. Yeah. I uh. Oh, I'm hyped. I get, I need to. I know. I I was just saying. Like, I get, I need to get off soon because I want to look some stuff up, and then I got to get to bed pretty soon. But I <laughs> wanted to ask. Um. Uh, Bay the blade and armor. Did y'all have any questions for us or any last second topics? And Mike, were you done? I am yeah. super hyped about your event. I, I um. I know that is is like God willing, as long as I'm able, I'm definitely gonna try to make it up there uh, to one of them because I want to play. Um, because the more this conversation went on, like at first, I was like, yeah, the RNG with um, X is a big factor. It is a big thing. But as I'm looking into the future, and this isn't just me like wishful thinking. As I'm thinking about the way three v three is played, as I'm thinking about the way that Takartum made the rulings, as far as like, hey, these are the only win conditions that you have. As I'm thinking about the way that Drawn Sword is pretty OP and that attack is the way to go, but if there is a possibility of some type of defense coming out, that there can be a, a heavy meta game for some of the way that we play. Um, and even when you're talking about, like, if it's a mirror matchup, well, then I'm going to go for the burst instead of trying to go for the uh, KO finish. And there's there's little things that I think will will come to fruition to, fruition to show us, like, this game can have more strategy in the future. but. Um, I'm hyped for you, hyped for that. But uh, armor and beta blade, y'all have any questions or any topics? Uh, don't think I got anything. Um, yeah, no, I don't really have anything. Um, you know, just thank you for having me on, and um, you know, be on the lookout for anything that I might post on my Instagram and everything else. It's gonna be yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I'm gonna put your Instagram up here, armor. Can you send me? I don't think you sent me your YouTube. Um, oh, I didn't. Yeah, no, I can do that. Yeah, send me your YouTube. Uh, definitely uh, like and subscribe with Armor and with Beta Blade. I, I highly recommend y'all follow him. Mm-hmm. If you want to get, it's not just the photos of the new Beyblades releasing. It also he also has the specs and the charts. I don't even know where he gets that info from. You don't have to say you don't tell your source, but you can see <laughs> like the the bits and the ratchets. Like as soon as it comes out like it's all mm-hmm. solid information um to help you build your meta game or just your beyblade knowledge um thank y'all for coming on mike did you have anything no i think that's about it yeah thank y'all so much for coming on um once again thank you all it's probably the last time um i'm speak on the store but thank you all so much for your patience and your understanding and all the love i've received from the community from People just looking out in in various ways, being understanding, um, being patient. Um, I did want to shout out to Beyblade Premier. I saw your video the other day. I know y'all ran into some issues, but you're handling handling it well. Um, All the other stores, whether you're running into issues or not, uh, thank y'all for what y'all do for the community. Continue to provide Beyblades and um, everyone just staying solid and staying on a community basis. Uh, much love to you all. Continue always to get out there, play Beyblades, spread the joy of Beyblades, spread the knowledge, uh, the competitiveness of it, or just the just the enjoyment of it uh, with your local community and hopefully nationals and, and, and world someday. Uh, we could all meet each other and I'll say my tongue twister, play Beyblade together. I have to say it slow. Hey, uh, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but thank you all. Uh, much love to you all and take care. Bye. See y'all.